Well, I have been looking forward to this for such a long time. <laughs> I'm here with my friend and buddy, John Terman. Recently, you've been over at my house. I have. You have. It's been great fun over there. Yes. But now I am at your house in your magnificent garden. That has changed pretty dramatically since last time I was here. It probably feels that way to you. It doesn't so much to me in some ways, but right. it's been almost two years since you were here. Two years, so, and, and how many weather events? Um, at least, well, you were here right after a huge one, right. which we've been kind of working on trying yeah. to resolve, and it's taken a while to do that. So then I think we had two smaller ones after that. So, <laughs> and, well, th and then just events where, where trees are gone and yeah. more, more sun and all in that. In other so. words, gardening in Oklahoma but that accounts for a lot of the changes that you made yes. because as I recall, it was pretty spectacular last time we were here. And that is a reminder to you guys, if you wanna do something really fun, go back and look at the initial, we'll put a link below of the, of the initial tour that we took over here at John's Garden. And then you can kind of compare it to today's video and see how yeah. things have changed. I, for one, am extremely envious because, you know, I left my mature garden uh -huh. for a new <laughs> garden, and it is this kind of lushness and maturity that well, I am just I'm, desperate to recapture. I'm glad you're seeing that, because I see at your garden all these new things that look so crisp and perfect, and I look around here and see the holes and, well, you know, the places where things need, still need to be fixed and well, all that. Well, it so, could not look any uh, better, but you know what, let's walk around. But one thing that definitely has not changed and that is, I would describe you as a maximalist gardener. Yes. <laughs> and and for those of you new to this channel, John is an interior designer, so that he's been over at my house helping. But the other element that has not changed is your passion for blue and That's, blue and white. That is white. true. In, Still love In your that. attire <laughs> and in all of your indoor and outdoor appointments. Okay, yeah. so, so let's start here. And Stuart, I want to give them a vantage point. So we are just, I love the way you have multiple seating areas so that now that we have gotten up, this is a charming little area where we were just sitting. It's got some, yeah, hold on, hold on, Stuart. Uh, it's got a couple of metal chairs with cushions. The lovely thing about this is it's right outside one of your doors and it's in the shade. It is. And it's kind of gives this kind of an evergreen loggia mm -hmm. a feel to different areas of your garden because I would still call this kind of a small garden. Oh, it is very much a small garden, I think. But right here especially, you get this... LA kind uh -huh. of effect, yes. which I think is really nice. And what I was sitting here the other day in the chair over there and realized, I'm not sure why we never put something right at the end of that as a focal point. Yeah, on so an axis. I see yeah. something new that needs to happen. That needs so. to be done. Well, that gives um, you something to right. play with. So the other thing is, is from this vantage point in the center, I think you can really clearly see those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. But it also makes you very much feel as if you're in a garden with different garden rooms. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, And it, this is kind of like a hallway. And as we talked before, I, that's my, kind of my philosophy is my interior comes outside and we try to create a similar idea with rooms and with accessories. Well, and, and the nice thing all is that sort of stuff. too, John, is you can move with the sun. Yes, So you can. like, it's pretty warm today. We were talking about how warm and humid it is. You just got back from the farmer's market. Um, it's supposed to get up in the 90s, mm -hmm. but under here, it's just It's delightful. really lovely, isn't it? Yeah. And there's a, there's a nice little breeze. Uh -huh. Okay, so you've got so much of, and so just be on the lookout for it, all of you, so much of your blue glazed pottery and I'm going to have to get some seed from you of, of your purple columbine. That sounds so I, well. I, I think I bought three plants two years ago. And it, and really it has did just well. come all up in here. Yeah, so. I had tons of it at my other house, and I can't remember if, I, if I've got seed. It's yeah. probably in a box somewhere. Probably somewhere, Still waiting right, to be unpacked. So. And then you've got all sorts of tons of hostas, none of which yet yeah, looks in any way bedraggled well, or when you go out where the hail was <laughs> you're well let's see just focus but then that on, one that on one that this. one was protected yes it's absolutely uh, beautiful this is a new bottle bouquet no nope. has it just it been was relocated there. was nope. it there it was really there okay i guess it really was so stewart dubbed that gave it yes, he did. the moniker <laughs> bottle bouquets and there you have very much just a green and a blue bottle mm -hmm. motif 
Just, Which I'm still, I, I still like to collect bottles because I like to drink wine and vodka and all the things that come in those pretty bottles. So. <laughs> yes, I hear you. I hear you, my friend. Yes. Oh, I see something familiar to me. Oh. One of my QVC Kobo yes. baskets. Those are great. I bought three and I keep one kind of near each watering place. I know. And this is what happens yeah, with them. And, and they're, they're just perfect. Yeah, they're perfect for yeah, this because they really they're are. waterproof. Water goes th right through I, well, them. That, weatherproof. I, I find that I will pull things knowing I have a place to drop it. Right, yeah, because it's right, right it around, there and so. it's lightweight. Yeah, very and it's lightweight. lightweight. So, so those are great. okay, this is just an explosion of blue. I did dress you did. appropriately <laughs> you did. to match my surroundings. What do you call this area? I just call it the East Porch. The um, East Porch, I okay. Do. Um, but, it, and as we talked about rooms, this really is a room. I think it really has that feeling. And, yeah. and when you're inside the house, you feel like you're looking out into another room. So, yes. Um, and so I think so many people asked you, so we might as well share it again, the color of this blue. Oh, I don't remember. I'll have to look I, you, again. We looked it up and now <laughs> we don't remember so again. It's, it's in the comments of that first video. But I'll it? Do, okay, I'll, okay. When, you, when you post this one, I'll post it again. I'll post so, it again. But really look at, you know, it just is such a brilliant segue from your interior mm -hmm. to the outside with your throw pillows, your coasters, your poofs, <laughs> <laughs> um, all of your, for lack of a better word, just regalia that you have just, up along this, this wall. Now refresh my memory, didn't you have to do some restorative work to the adobe and the not, the not this wall, it was the front wall. The front wall, okay. We had an issue with and had to, um, yes, bury a lot of dollars, as I call it, and do some <laughs> restoration work, so. Yes, um, very unfun way yeah, to spend money. Yeah, it is not a fun money. way. But so, I kind of like how it turned out out there, so we'll see Yeah, that. no, it looks great. Yeah. So describe kind of your muse for this entire area and how it has changed since the last time and what dictated those changes. Well, um, the... Again, we're in one room here. You have another room this direction, which is to the south. And I always call this the bamboo court because of this bamboo that grows uh -huh. along the wall over here. And there had been two very large um, fetinias in this position, almost in the positions of where these hollies are now, that had been um, limbed up and they really were trees, small trees. Mm -hmm. So we lost both of those um, two years ago. And um, when you were here last time, we hadn't replaced anything yet. So the hollies came in. It was a great experience. You would have loved this. They had to, they, laid um, rubber mats across the front yard and drove a great big forklift over here to lift these over the wall because oh there was no way to get in um, with them. So yeah, it was really quite a, quite a production. Um, and my hope is that these grow, um, I want them to be more freeform looking and create, to create lots of shade, of course, we'd mm -hmm. love that. Mm -hmm. um, and just kind of protect this inner room right. uh, from the outer one, so. And give um, you some privacy. Yes, absolutely. And it's done some already, but. So I, I'm going to guess our friend Roger probably helped you. With John and Roger helped with this. Yes. There's no way I could have pulled that off. Yes. And, and this is one of those places where we had to really, um, we had to buy something mature. Mm -hmm. um, again, at, at my age, I can't start with a little plant. And, <laughs> I, and I was just sick about losing what we had lost. So it yeah. was worth doing that. Right. And of course, not only were the plants something, but then that whole installation process, it was really, it's stressful. It, it was really something. It was very stressful, but I think successful now. Yes. And, um, Oh, there it is. It's noon in Oklahoma yes. City. So. All of my followers know this now. It's it's our emergency alert system mm -hmm. that if you live in Oklahoma, <laughs> we've got lots of emergencies. Yes, we do. Okay, Stuart, I've had enough of this. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that was long. That was a long <laughs> yes, one. It was. I guess it's the confluence of a number of different tires since you, you were at the epicenter. Yes. The epicenter. Be safe. Yes, be we safe. <laughs> Okay, back to where we were. Where we're talking. Let me just breathe for a moment. Uh, so your courtyard is largely the result of weather events, but it, it just it definitely putting in the mature hollies was the right was. thing to do. Right. And, and of course, we have a lot more sun now than we did. So surprisingly, the maple has done okay. That was totally under that. That surprises Under a petunia before. And it really has done a fine. And, it's, and, and even in the hot summer, it starts getting a little fried, but you know, it's gonna be okay, I think. Um, but then just up in here, we get a lot more sun. So I'm trying some new things. Um, this is, I'm gonna call it Rose of Sharon, but I can't remember what its real name is. So that was something we're gonna try this year to see if we can get some blooms and hopefully it'll grow out right. a little bit, create a little more shade. Yeah. I have a um, question on this. Uh -huh. The sun causes the red? Yes. 
That is, I've yeah, never so noticed that. The part that's in the shade stays darker green. And then when it gets the sun on it, it turns red. That is beautiful. They probably can't hear me, so somebody tell them what I asked. Okay, yeah. So Stuart just asked if it was the sun that made it turn green. It's a and it makes it turn red. It made it turn red, yes. rather. And the green that's in the shade is because... It stays green. Yeah. Okay. Now, now okay, now this is a tip, though. <laughs> this is a tip. That probably, if you had just designed this and you wanted to grow a Japanese maple here, to it. you wouldn't have been able to do <laughs> yeah. it because it wasn't already established. Right. The only reason it can really handle this exposure is because it was well established, yes. it was mature, and it, and I, and it was I, I, older and wiser. That's probably 20 years old. That's yeah. one of the first things I stuck in under those other trees. And yeah. one of the problems I have out here, it's really hard to plant things in the ground. So partly because of this bamboo, which comes up everywhere, constant. Uh, on this side of the fence, it's really good though. It only stays on this side, but there's so many roots and things in here. And then yeah. of course those Fatinia roots are still in here. Yeah. So that dictated the placement of the hollies where they were able to dig. So anyway, it's hard to do. So that's why I use a lot of these pots and just sort of sit them mm -hmm. in the beds. Um, Another great tip, if you, if you really can't dig in the dirt right. for whatever reason, um, then definitely and make like container that gardens. big box, whatever there is in a big pot, believe it or not, and has well, been there for a long it, time. Yes. Yeah. And it looks, it looks great. And he seems to be happy. What variety is this golden beauty over here, which looks so fabulous with your blue furniture? That would be the Lowe's variety. I don't know what I bought. The Lowe's variety, some <laughs> yes. kind of gold, uh, golden. It is one of those gold, it's called golden something, I golden don't remember. Golden juniper, yeah, we'll uh, call it golden yeah. juniper. So, and then later, uh, this ground cover is plumbago, so we'll get some purpley blue blooms going in here, which look really nice against all these greens. So the nice thing is though, even though right now it's a little bit warm in the morning or when you're just a little bit chilled and you've got that sun mm -hmm. coming down, the perfect place to have coffee. It is. And then of course in the evening, this is in the shade. So it's really nice out here in the evening. We have dinner out here fairly often. Yeah, it's, um, it's just if, lovely. If it's not too windy. So. I have to ask, this furniture is brilliant. Where'd you get it? So that's Amazon. And I, uh, the company was called, what is this called? Flash Furniture or something like that? But I think the actual brand is Crosley. Crosley. Did um, you get it very long ago? A um, couple of years ago. I okay. think they're still available though. I think okay, so I will definitely try to put a link yeah. to this because uh, this would make a brilliant Mother's Day gift. So today I'm in the show, I'm just Western really Rice. sharing Mother's Day gifts ideas. Uh -huh. So then that's the chairs. The table came with um, those little French bistro chairs and they were Home Depot. Um, like four or but, five years but ago, this but the a, colors seem to be consistent. Yes. I don't know if the same person made them all. Yes, and, um, and the pads, did you get those, those separately? Are at home or someplace, yeah. you know, all, all yep. fairly inexpensive things. Yeah. Um, I've learned that so many things outside don't last forever, mm -hmm. and it, it doesn't matter how much you pay for it, they still don't last. <laughs> they still don't so, last, and you can't really expect so you might them to, as well, so you might right. as well be thrifty at Absolutely. the beginning. Yeah, but um, this, this has aged very well. In fact, I'm not seeing, there's a little bit of fading from it, but not much, so. Well, and speaking of thrifty, this is, if you could find something at a thrift store that was already pre-aged and modeling the metal would still be kind of cool. Yeah, it would be, it would be, yeah, And absolutely. You've, you've got that kind of vintage thing going. Okay, well, uh -huh. this is absolutely spectacular. Now, if, Stuart, if you don't mind kind of getting this long view, and of course, you have all of your rose rocks and your crystals, and you know you've kind of gotten me into, I'm, I'm, I'm not, quite to the extent you are, <laughs> but I am getting into blue. You, okay. you know that I've tried to right. incorporate you more have of it more blue. Yes, yeah, in, in my house. I'm trying to yeah. mix it up as I, as I get older, but look at this beautiful vista. And this is the thing that judicious pruning can do for you. And that is just, and by the way, this effect I was told is called a lion's tail. Really? Where you really prune out the interior and then the fluff that. is mostly on the ends and you let the lion tail get really okay. long because it's so wonderful. This creates an overhead uh -huh. shady passage. It really does. Well, you taught me something. I mean, I, I did that on purpose, but I didn't know that it was what a thing. Was so, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, so much of gardening is instinctive, well, isn't it? And that's especially me because I'm not, I'm, you know, I don't have well, a lot of education. Well, but you're a designer, so right. you've got you know, good um, composition skills. And well, let's face it, we're both, we're both pretend garden designers and okay. designers because well, we're self-taught. Well, I still think you're a different level than I am. So, well, I, I, uh, I would include you in the interior uh, category. So this is just beautiful flagstone um, and describe just how this came to be. 
I wish I had an answer for that. Obviously we had, we needed to get paths in here going to, this is the kitchen door. So mm -hmm. we needed to get that way. Um, you needed to get back through here. Initially, this brick wall, that was a raised bed that was here when I bought the house. Mm -hmm. And instead of tearing all that out when we created the addition to the house, we left it. And so it's just sort of started doing these paths through it and it creates up and down things. Not sure how that's gonna work in 10 years. Uh, yeah, as we, as <laughs> Cause you really have to be careful walking age. through here. Right. Um, but there are lots of levels and, and lots of places to fall. Um, so far I haven't done that, but. Um, but and, then, it, and then this at one point had a lot of shade and so as the uh, junipers are gone from the neighbor's yard now, so we get uh -huh. so much more sun in here in the morning. So I'm not really sure how this is gonna work. This will be the first year. Right. I'm hoping that again, the maples are established. Uh -huh. They've been here several years. Some of these other things, I've changed some things to more boxwood and um, the spirea, which can handle more sun. And believe it or not, my hydrangeas were not getting enough sun. So they've been doing better the last yeah. year or two Sometimes with a little more take, sun. Yeah, so we'll see a little more than um, they how that all works. I love, this is, this is one of those little luxuries, I think, you guys, that costs nothing. And it is just such a treat to yourself. Things where you've just very carefully curated the stones mm -hmm. that you have gathered to meet this terracotta and cream colored color palette and then you've just assembled them here in this wonderful pot you know and, and i love things like that obviously that's kind of my look but again i kind of wanted to put a plant there and i kept trying to say what it would be and finally it was just like nope i think this is a place for an object yes uh, now someday that may move and the plant may go there but um uh, one of the things that i've been doing is in oklahoma our um uh hawthorns you know just are not surviving uh -huh. and i had uh -huh. 24 at one point um, and so by we're the, down to about three. Yeah. Okay, okay. So by the way, I'm often asked when I do public speaking, okay, what plants did we used to be able to just rely yeah. on as tried and true and the quintess, but no longer. And but the no quintessential can. example of that are Indian hawthorns, not because of the heat, but because of the, the cold. cold. Right. So it's something we continually have to kind of, kind of watch. So there were for. several in here and now they're all gone and, and have been gone. replaced with basically boxwood and, and more hydrangea. You know what I love about this time of year, about May, is is not even so much the roses and the peonies, the geraniums. Yes. The geraniums still aren't so hot no, you know, but to quit blooming. They haven't yep. gotten budworm yet. Yep. I love the fragrance. I just love the No, I like fashion. geraniums too. That's one of those tried and true things I keep doing. So, yes. And it works. Yes. So. Well, and, and even though they get hot in the summer, they come back. They do. I, so. You know, it might it may not be footsure, but I do love the topographical interest of this, Good. and it probably helps with drainage. Well, I was going to say that was one of the reasons we kind of created a drain thing going down through here. It worked for a while, and now I've probably planted too many things, so it, uh, you know, the water collects here, but yes, it's okay. Uh, and my, look at just an example of your collection. And do you shop any one place for things or you just shop oh, everywhere? Well, I will say that the most of the jars came from uh, Tuesday morning and home goods and places like that, just because again, they're not that expensive. So uh -huh. if one does get broken, right, it goes in the broken pottery garden and not, yes. you know, I don't, I don't feel like it's so precious. Um, the slag glass, I think I got in Arkansas somewhere. This is a new addition. We, uh, Roger um, found some planters and we put one back here and one in the front. Um, just again, to try to create a little more height over yes, here, yes. a little more privacy from the neighbor. Um, okay, great tip. Tip, Stuart, we need to put up the little tip thing because this is just a brilliant tip along with the boxwood that you had staged in there in a container. This is a way you can get instant privacy, uh -huh. instant height and interest, interest, textural interest. And those aren't really expensive plants. So Juniper's are do very inexpensive well. and yeah. I hope they grow and get big and you know, we'll yeah. do well there. Obviously yes. they're not gonna grow forever there because of the size of the pot. But You know, uh, I can just see how fun would this be when you're entertaining to put huge in the cool of the evening, <laughs> bouquets of sunflowers oh, in that would here be and, and eliminate that. little tea lights everywhere yes. would just be, just be charming. Okay, and as we come down the yellow brick road, hellebore and you've got, you know, Virginia creeper is one of those things we have a love-hate relationship know, with, isn't I, it? I pretty much hate it, but I can't seem to control it. So, <laughs> well, so you might as well learn to love so it and just deal it with it. Bit, right. Yes, and just deal with it. So you like to mulch your pots. Interesting. I, I love the way you have incorporated so many more junipers in pots and containers than I remember you doing. And in this the past. that's a new thing for me. 
So I hope that it's not a mistake. We'll see. No, I think, I think it's I think a great handle tip. The heat. Um, you know, we have bagworms, and so I'm yes. going to have to stay on top of that. But um, great winter interest, but, yeah. and they're cheap. And, they, and they're very cheap. inexpensive. They really are. Um, um, and they've got, again, year-round yeah. interest. So here's here's my question. How do you decide where you're, I guess a lot of it is just the, the where the shade is, but how do you decide with all of these charming places? Well, we tend to go to the front. We like that area up there. So yeah. uh, this is really more for if we have a group, we'll come uh -huh. back here. Yeah. Um, and and it's it's a great view from inside the house. There's a window over here that we see all this. So we we enjoy this more from the inside than we do the outside because we really live over there. Where we now, can... see, I can see this as a great outdoor workspace, and and we do lots of meetings at my house, oh, and I could definitely that. see this yeah, as being would. a wonderful outdoor. I don't have that area. opportunity. I don't I don't meet my clients here, so <laughs> I can't work outside. Well, this um, this is where I primarily meet, and it's and it's it's so nice to mm -hmm. be able to sit outside. Yeah. And this had gotten just kind of devastated in here two years ago from all of that ice we have. And it's, it's, it has a lush feel again. There's still some it's recovered things nicely. that need to happen, but, uh, but I want it to be very loose and woodsy looking. And, and it's, but it's got a very nice balance of things being very trimmed, but also very loose and mm -hmm. billowy. And again, there's more sun in here. So the hydrangeas that were planted under here, Last year bloomed really well, and they look like they might this year too. I see lots of buds on yeah, them. Yeah, this looks like a, um, an Annabelle. Uh, it is, yes. Just, and there's this area, more so than the other areas, has lovely movement to it. There's Doesn't a gentle it? breeze today, uh, and I just love the. It, it is fun to watch it, the things move in here. Yeah. So. And it's not. It's a calmer space. I you, think so. You've reined in your maximalist tendencies here. This would be a great place to meditate if you. Mm -hmm. It really if, could if be you if, do outdoor. If, if I did that sort of thing. <laughs> if you yeah, did that so. sort of thing. Um, no, it would be. Just and I finally, it. I mean, I've pretty much given up on, on color out here other than green. Um, I mean, I get those hydrangea blooms, you know, which are white, but it, it's just not a great place to grow potted flowers or things like that. But so, it contributes uh, to the beautiful serenity. But I, I really like it that it doesn't have that. So, of this space. Um, great basket mm -hmm. source. Uh, home goods. No, at home, at home. At home. Yep. What's the difference between home goods and at home? Well, at home used to be um, something pottery. What was that called? Cimarron Pottery. Remember, it's a Texas store. Oh boy, store. that was yeah. Yeah. That's so, a, but that and I think it still belongs okay. to that company. So, okay. much larger box store, lots of good stuff. Yeah. Um, and then I think Home Goods is part of the TJ Maxx family, isn't it? And I don't know. I think. Yeah, maybe you know, it is. So I should know that. I and, should know that kind of thing. A little bit. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, um, but I'm at home is a great place, a great source for a lot of stuff for decorating. Especially when you are like, sometimes I'll do, well, I had a project at OU at a, for a conference room and there were all these shelves that had been built when they used to collect binders of oh, yes. medical research and yes. all this stuff. Well, yes. Of course, all that's been dumped in the trash. So for not a whole lot of money, I was able to go to at home and get the things, you know, to fill these shelves to make shelves. it a decent right. looking room again. Right. Um, and, so anyway, it's a good source and I, for that. And so. I bet you also, you're a thrifter too. Yes. I don't do a lot of... Yeah, you're more thrifting than you are these, the the inexpensive stores. So, yeah, I love uh, more thrifting yeah. or... Um, but like this I wanted because I wanted something on this table, but I wanted water to drain out of it. I didn't want to yeah. create a place for water to collect. And, well, I think uh, there's that so. that tension. You know, the other thing for me is, I'm is I, and I hate it when people say, oh, I'm so busy. But after you, especially when you move, I am, I'm pretty busy. Yes, you are. Yeah. <laughs> we can tell. <laughs> yeah, yes. Um, my loved ones can tell. How I'm sure. I bet, you just, uh, yes. I bet you just fall into the bed at night and just pass out. So. But the thing is, is I, I have to admit, I do more online shopping now because I just I just right. don't have the time to get out enough. So I think it's that nice. I'm not an absolutist about anything, really. I, I think it's moderation and all from multiple different sources. Mm, I agree. Spread your love around. But when you're... But, my, but thrifting gets my heart first. It does. But when I... It seems like if I'm trying to thrift for a project... I'm not lucky, you know, right. you find things when, oh, you, yeah. when you're not looking so when you find things, yeah. when you think, oh, I need to go find, you know, yeah. some old no. books no. or whatever, they're not there. That, um, and then one of the things I like about these bigger box stores, you know, sometimes I'm just inspired by what I see. I don't know what I'm looking for. Yeah. And they're, they change over quickly. I mean, it's very much, it's yeah. fast interior, fast interiors. Right. Like we talk about fast yes. fashion. Yes. Um, yes. And, you know, maybe not so great for the environment, but. But, it works for what we have to do Well, like I so, say, val yeah. a moderation in all. It is. Okay, in the dark of night, Stuart, would you help me move this <laughs> over to my house? We can do that. 
when when John's not looking right. because that is brilliant. They still make them. They just don't look like that. <laughs> yeah, I know. That one's patinaed. Yes, that, that one is I bought just... that. I guess I'm giving them. I bet that's almost been blowing to me almost 40 years. Is that a I statuary that, world thing? I think it might have been. Yeah. And it's a very common one. You see it. Yeah. Um, and it's actually cracked, but it leaks on the edge over here. So I have to put water in almost every day. Um, but it's got great color on it. And then you you use really successfully, yours comes back. This has been really successful. So the one you mentioned before, which is that more miniature one, I don't think is quite as hardy here. Okay. This is, this by the way, this is Muhlenbeckia uh, or AKA wire vine. Wire vine. And I've, there are three sizes of it. And I've only ever seen the big one on the West Coast. Um, but this size is very common here. Mm -hmm. and, and it really does come back. You think it's dead, but it, but it really it comes does back. come and back. It, so. And especially because yours is naturally mulched with leaves mm -hmm. and things. And and also, I would say that it, it's pretty good about handling both sun and shade. Mm -hmm. It seems to do okay here. Um, and again, it was planted when it was all shady, but... Um. And lots of textural components. I love, I may have to snap a, a little segment of well, that. You're welcome to do that. Because I love this co blue green color palette through here. And that's, you know, that's one of those things that just popped up there. And I was like, how perfect. It, it, knew, is where, perfect. it knew where to plant itself. Yes. Um, but it comes up all around. And of course, a lot of people think that's invasive and something they don't want, but um, Ooh, I'm it. happy with it. So very serendipitous. Yes. And plus, that would be something that's easy to easy to control. Okay, you, we have more to see, but I think for today, we're gonna have to end on this note. And here's here's another thing that I think is a signature touch. You know, I'm so into signature touches. Yes, you, are. you know that about me. Look over here, look what he's done with just that beautiful broken. But, and I used to have a, a rather large area of what I call the broken pottery garden. Um, it has gone away, that some of it's left. Uh, one of the things that I learned last year though, which you can't see, but I thought this, and it, someone told me, I'm not gonna say it was my idea, but when I have all these empty pots in the winter, to do something in them. So I now have a collection of broken pottery that like this one had seashells in it all winter. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, one right. on the back porch had blue pieces of broken blue stuff in it. Uh, sometimes I'll pick up my stones that are laying around and put mm -hmm. those in a pot. Yeah. And it really made I a difference. I didn't so. feel like I needed to do the whole pansy thing. and. Yeah. Uh, and the cabbages, which don't work here anymore. Right. Another thing that doesn't do well yeah. in Oklahoma. Yeah. Um, our weather's too extreme, you know, for that to work well. So um, anyway, I thought that was a great idea. And then some of it I put back in the garage and some of it I just dumped out. I have to tell we'll you come this, back to it, but. this little story uh -huh. um, and a huge gold star to my followers. That, John, you know from experience that this channel has the best followers yes, ever. They are so kind. They are so... Um, they make brilliant suggestions mm -hmm. without in any way, you know, being critical about it. They're just wonderful. But I have to share this story with you. So I found a piece of pottery in my garden and I and I discovered it and I put it up on the channel. And one of our followers tracked it down and told me what it was, what it was. and where it came <laughs> from. And, and So was it just buried out in the yard somewhere? Yeah. It was That's just great. it was just a little bit of garden archaeology. And, and it's it's unusual for that to happen in Oklahoma. You know, on the on the East Coast, of course, that's what happened to trash. Yes. And so when you, you go back 300 years uh -huh. and digging, you find all kinds all of kinds great of stuff. amazing. We things. don't find so much like that here, but I think that's fun that you did. I yes. remember your attic treasures you found. Those were fun. Oh too, yeah, attic so. treasures. Yeah. Okay, well let's stop here. Okay. But can you just end by? Isn't this brilliant? And then we'll just say goodbye okay. for this Sunday show. So there's some peonies blooming, which got a little rain tattered, but still have some good color. Um, that whole area along the fence over here, when I moved here were, was, um, um, I always have trouble with this word. What is the green thing that grows everywhere in Oklahoma? You have them down the side of your yard. Uh, you have pond hollies. No, the tall ones that are overgrown. Hollies. No, those aren't hollies along the back fence. Oh, the juniper. Juniper, the thank cedars. you. I always have trouble with that word. Yeah, and I don't cedars. know why. As much as I love Jen, you'd think I would remember juniper. You would remember, But anyway, yeah. these were junipers. And so it was very shady. They were too wide for the driveway. So finally the neighbor and I said, okay, they're going to come out. And I was like, I don't know how this is going to look, but it finally has a lush look now. And it's kind of a, just a border garden. Yeah. Um, and all kinds of things happen. You can see the larkspur has um, self-seeded because yeah. I didn't pay attention and shake them where they should have. Um, so they're all on but the edge. Brilliant. Um, but they're going to be pretty. Um, so. And one of the few places um, that I have seen Ilex or Sky Pencil Holly do very well. Uh -huh. it's, I think it can be hard to grow, but well, you those have done well effectively. Um, and they made it through beautiful. that horrible winter, lost every single leaf, you know, which they don't normally do. And I wow. thought these are goners. And we wired them all back. Because they were bit every direction. We wired uh -huh. them back together and they came back out. 
So yeah. I think they might survive here in our when we go down to below 15. Yeah, yeah we have to, um, sometimes so we'll we have to be rewarded for uh, our so, so many things, you know, we'll say zero or five. I know. But now in Oklahoma, you've got to get that, 15 to 20. Oh, so just below, that additional so. 15 degrees. Yeah. Thank you, darling. You're welcome. So I good to see you. It, yes. I want to come for a tour yes. of your garden sometime soon. Well, I, yeah. I'm keeping up with you on TV okay, okay. and I drive by occasionally. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, uh, well, it's, it's a work uh, in progress. And yes. like I say, people say, oh, it looks a little bit messy. Well, gardens that aren't established look a little they, bit messy. They, have, they tend to do that, don't they? It, yeah, it takes they, a bit. They tend to do that. Uh, things but, have to grow together, and yeah. I love that when that yeah. happens. So yeah. Good to see you. Good to see yeah. you too, Stuart. Okay, sure. take care. Thank you. You guys have a wonderful Sunday. Well, hello everyone and welcome back to the Storybook Cottage, AKA my new house. And you can see that we are really in the midst of it. There is chaos all around us. For a while, Stuart, I was able to keep up with the influx of boxes. In other words, they would come in, I'd empty them, then more would come in. Well, that ship has sailed. And right now I am just, I am, surrounded by boxes that are hollering at me telling yeah yeah saying empty me and, and help me find my <laughs> rightful place which i shall do but today what i want to focus on is not the chaos but some order that we've actually established primarily in the great room and i've invited my friend john terman back because he's going to help us address some of the questions that we had about setting up that room the placement of the tv a number of those different kinds of questions we're going to go through those one by one so so let's get started. great room and answer some of those questions. But the number one, uh, I think, decision point was where to place the TV. And it really was kind of a collaboration. The right answer seemed pretty obvious once I read through so many of your comments and I consulted with John. And we're going to discover where we ended up putting the TV and the rationale for it. But first, I want everyone to appreciate that my island is clutter-free and it has remained pretty much clutter-free, hasn't it, Stuart? Yeah. Since I moved in, because I have put the fear of God in, any, <laughs> in anyone who dumps their stuff. Even Stuart, when you walked in, you said, I'm gonna put my camera case here, but just momentarily. Yeah, it's like it'll only be there. Yeah, just momentarily. Okay, so Stuart, come on, let's go around the corner. And this also helps people know how it kind of all fits together to the great room where my buddy John is waiting. John Hello again. Turman. Hello, sweetie. So good to see you. It's good to see you. Oh, in this beautiful room. I know it's, it's, it's kind of coming along. It is. But before we get started, so many people have wanted to know about you, John, and if they want to take advantage of your services, your designer services, how do they get in touch with you? Well, the easiest thing to probably remember is that my uh, email is john at johnterman com. Okay, and that's T-U-R-M-A-N. And thank you for saying that, yes. Yeah, yeah. And the other thing is, John does large-scale projects and everything, mm -hmm. but he also, thankfully for me, does smaller-scale projects like mine. It's more of a consulting. I do. I, and I, I always say I'll hang a picture for somebody if that's all they want and um, do a whole house and I travel to do my work and yeah. um, it's been amazing um, how that's worked out. But it, there are lots of different ways to, to engage me and uh, I've even done things just online. So oh, right, where okay. I never went to the house. Oh really? Uh, yes. So if somebody um, sent you images well, or whatever you could Well I had a client who was building a new house in um, Texas and she needed help with her um, finishes and her plumbing selections and uh -huh. all that stuff and so she would shop and look online and I would do the same and then we would have a, a video call and talk about all these things and anyway it worked out really well. Yeah so, so there's so yeah. many different ways that there from are. There really are. very small granular scale to a very large scale so I just wanted to answer that question <laughs> before we get into the long list of questions, solutions that mm -hmm. some of our followers had, and how we worked through the decision-making process, I think, together. Absolutely. Because there's no, as you and I have often said, there's no wrong idea. There mm -hmm. is just the one or two that are right for you. That's absolutely correct. And so yeah. I give all of you guys out there in YouTube land credit and you 
John for helping me see the light. Okay. So let's get started and reveal the placement of the TV. So if you guys remember when I was here before, I kind of thought maybe the best solution for the television would be to move it so that everybody could see it from anywhere you sat in the room. Right. And it was this wall right over here. And the bookcases were over here originally. Um, and so we had this long discussion about all that. And I think you were maybe on board, but not totally. Right. Right. And uh, so what was really cool about all the responses that you all gave was that um, everybody had an opinion. So we went through it and came up with um, a list of things, but overall, this did kind of win out, I think, didn't and, it? And, 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 and the important and thing was, was just yours. to try it. Yeah. So, um, and so I got a text the other night that Linda and Jamie had done this, and I'm so excited <laughs> to see it, and we're excited to show you. I, like I say, I think sometimes we have the luxury of being able to try things, and, and to the extent you can try different things before you commit, mm -hmm. then that's a good idea. I also shared with you that we're not really huge TV. Right people and this actually was in a study that my husband had upstairs <laughs> i think it was used maybe a handful of times really okay so so it's a, i was surprised when we moved it in here how much bigger well, and, it was well it is big but i think it's an appropriate size for the room and of course once you hang the art and around and all this and keep the you know get the table styled and all that the tv does just kind of disappear and my whole point is that you shouldn't have to move something to watch it it should just be there and you also don't want to overpower the room. And right. there's enough other things going on in here that even though this is a large piece, I think it will disappear when the wall is covered with art and, and you don't see it when you walk in the yeah. room. So, and when you do want to watch TV, all you have to do is sit down and turn it on. You're not moving something exactly. or lowering something or raising something. Exactly. Um, I mean, there were, I don't know if we, there were a long list of ideas, and who, many of which were great. And uh, who knew? Right. And, and you know, and I love the fact that you guys really thought outside the box. Yes because I tend to be kind of formulaic in how I think of things. And the fact that you guys really thought outside the box about not just this room, but other rooms, I think is just a wonderful thing. It is, it's been fun. It's so. just really a wonderful thing. But you came up with, cause you, trust me, John, I think read, and there were a lot of them. <laughs> Who knew people had such strong feelings about right, TVs? So that's true. But John went through every one of them and he came up with some different options mm -hmm. that people were, like, shared and and how we went through each one of those options but before we start that i want to i want to briefly talk a little bit about the inspiration for this room in general yes that'd be great because you had asked me about that earlier mm -hmm. well like i said before we get started you'd ask me what what my inspiration for this mm -hmm. room was and i think it's kind of twofold my husband and I spent our honeymoon in Tanzania. Oh, how cool. A, I love that. Yeah, in a three week, on a three week walking safari uh -huh. in the Salu Game Reserve. Okay. And it was one of those trips of a lifetime. And I, ha I have to share. I know, that's an amazing picture of Jane. Isn't, isn't that it an really amazing is. picture? He looks just kind of like very Hemingway esque. He does. Don't, Absolutely. don't you think? And then we even, Stuart, we may have to put up some of these images. We've got oh, us I love that. in front of our pup tent. Uh -huh. and and in the savannah, and we have some <laughs> wildlife pictures too. So we love that that trip so much. And also I think it's kind of informed by the fact that, you know, my son Johnny lives in Singapore, mm -hmm. and I love that kind of, kind of Eurasian, African, that whole thing, mm -hmm. um, kind of inappropriately called British colonial. Right. But I, I really love that, and it's kind of the fusion of different cultures. And then secondly, I think because my husband has is just short of an, an anthropology degree from mm -hmm. SMU, and he loves archaeology and anthropology and Great Plains Indian culture and mm -hmm. all of those kind of things. So it's kind of a fusion of those two. Which is, is very successful. It really, that works to put that all together. and. And it's gonna make a very comfortable room. Yeah, so, I think I and, think so too, and comfortable for us. And then you know I love Serena Crawford. Yes. You and I are both fans of, mm -hmm. of her work, and it looks very Serena Crawford to me. And it kind of just feels like a hunting lodge. Yeah. But it's really just going to look very Linda Vodder. Well, that's what we want it to look. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. That's yes. so nice. Um, okay. But enough about that. Enough about the aesthetics. Let's get down to the nitty gritty of the practicalities of TV placement. Okay. So um, a number of the ideas, and, and they're all great ideas, so I don't want anyone to take offense on any of this. They just weren't right for Linda's room or for Linda and Jamie. Um, but as you know, we talked the first time about having a TV on the arm over in the corner over there, 
And I think it, everybody pretty much agreed that would be the first thing you saw when you walked in the room. It would look like a gym or a spa or something like that. <laughs> and of course, not... that was my suggestion. Yeah. <laughs> so my definitely my bad. And can you imagine this? Oh no, it would be horrible. Behemoth. It, it would just be horrible. And the furniture, you would be your neck would be turned. You would be turned. The only place you would be able to see that is right here. And yeah. that just wouldn't have been great. So, and then people mentioned, you know, using which has been done lots of times, using carts for TVs that you roll in and roll out, and um, TVs on arms above the fireplace that you lower down. Well, all of those things require work when you get ready to watch TV. You want to be able to come and plop in a chair and just hit the button, and it's all there for you. You and, don't want to have to move any cabinet doors yeah. or. Um, you know, lower something off the fireplace. This new, it's, I think it's sort of new, this uh, bracket that goes over the fireplace, it actually pulls out and drops it down. Well, I will say, and I hope none of my clients are listening to this, but the ones who have it never push it back up. Right. And it just looks horrible. You know, it's just not, yeah. it just, it, it, yes, it, it functions, it but really the doesn't. Beauty right. of the it room. just it doesn't work. Talk a little bit, if you would, about why, because instinctively you think, TV over the fireplace. There's a there's an outlet there. Mm -hmm. It would just be so kind of convenient. But talk a little bit about why that was not the solution for us. Well, in here it would have been too high, really. Um, I think you would have been looking up all the time. Mm -hmm. And the really, from my standpoint, there, and I think yours too, it truly would have been the first thing you see when you mm -hmm. walked in the room. Mm -hmm. And that's not what you want to see. The fireplace is beautiful. That's really one of the things that drew you to the room into yeah. the house. Yeah. So you don't want to have this competition with the TV. Um, and so anyway, and I just think that, um, you know, people talked about using armoires and of course we did that quite some time ago that became a really big deal. And I've always felt like I was sitting and looking in an open closet when I was doing that. <laughs> However beautiful that might be. Again, people don't tend to close the doors, um, you know, or the insides of the armoire weren't finished well or, or styled or something like that. Well, it just never really quite works. So the, the um, other thing that was, that really was very important to me that really stuck home with me is that you said it was a great opportunity cost because yes I could have the TV up there but at, at the cost of not being able to have that that fabulous Shapiro painting up Absolutely. there which should be the focal point Absolutely. of the room not a piece of electronics yes and so again no right or wrong answer, no. but for me, and because so many of you talked about Next Train. Yes, yes. See, so, I, there's I don't lots watch of TV that much, so I don't even. <laughs> okay, so lots of Next Train. Next Train, but the the thing I am more aesthetically driven, and so when you pointed out the opportunity cost of not having a piece of well, fabulous and that's art up there, one of your prime places for seasonal decorating and, yes. and all the things you oh, do. It, yeah. you know, and if you had a TV there. You just blew that, so yeah, it just it, wouldn't it, work. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Okay, so, so now go so, on to some of the next say, things yeah, you guys brought I think we got all that. Oh, and one of the things, too, that we, we and you and I both thought was interesting was that um, the bookshelves themselves. People talked about splitting them, taking them apart, building things in between them. You know what? All let's things. go over to so, the bookshelves. Okay, let's go look at So that. for people who haven't um, seen them. So for one thing, in case, I think there was a question about this, too. The bookshelves are, in fact, in four pieces. So, so yes, that would have worked to split them. But one of the things that would have happened had we done something like that is we would have created a very similar situation to the way the fireplace wall works architecturally. So and let's let's rehash a little yeah. bit because some people had suggested that we divide this two apart. and two and we have them flanking each side mm -hmm. of the TV, the TV and excuse my furniture, <laughs> my furniture polish. Um, a great focal point for any room. <laughs> Um, but had talk about that. So now explain. And then, and then people talked about either building a table or a shelf or even another piece that looks something like this, you know, mm -hmm. all those are great ideas. Um, I will say too, that always, I think when people say they're going to build something or have something recreated, that becomes more of an issue than you would think. I mean, it and seems simple and, more and it's expense. very expensive and generally. Yeah. And then getting the finishes to match and all that sort of thing. But um, I just feel like this would have been too large and too much like the fireplace wall had we left that over there and tried to do that. And then the other thing is, I think these are great bookshelves and I would hate yeah. it to have diluted that. Yeah. Um, you know, so I think they do need to stay together. I think they need to stay dark. And as you, and I hope we'll show you as you come back into this room, they don't overwhelm the room at all and they do create a yeah. nice uh, balance. They're relatively shallow. Yeah. Oh, and there's lots of room right here now behind the sofa. Yeah, and let me address a couple of, of things from an aesthetic standpoint, because so, some people said, oh, the, all of this dark furniture against the white. That's exactly what I want. Mm -hmm. It's the white 
with the contrast of the dark furniture that very much gives me the aesthetic yes, that, that I want. And, and also that I think is appropriate to the strong light of Oklahoma. And, and I so I think it's not only African, Eurasian or whatever, but I also think it's very Oklahoman. Some people also commented on the fact that these don't sit perfectly, you know, straight. Mm -hmm. Well, that's something that can be rectified easily with a shim or, we, or with something right. that we just haven't gotten around to, gotten around to yet. Uh, but, but in the meantime, they just look like antique bookshelves, so it doesn't matter if you see a little of this. And, right, and know, they are, re they're fine. not antique, they're reproductions. But we had them in my them other up. home. But again, I didn't want in any way to dilute the drama well, of how they all look together. For me, not for maybe for some of you, but for me, I I really like the impact of seeing them yes. all together and the backdrop that they provide. Right, I agree. I, I I think this is very successful. So I'm really glad you did this, and I don't think you're going to move it back. So. No, I don't think so I either. I really don't. Yeah. Uh, well, once we did it, my husband was just going, "Okay, that was duh. That was just like duh." Well, and it it made the room. Um, first of all, all the furniture came in a little closer into the room, and it feels much cozier, uh -huh. and you're not too far from anybody to talk or to watch the TV, or right. it just feels. Better. And then it created a lot of space back here, which I think is going to be the opportunity for your mudroom. Yeah. Um, I really do. I think. Um, Before some... we travel down and pull on that string <laughs> a little bit, let's talk, if I can even remember, Stuart, do we have images of what it looked like before? Oh, yeah. Ooh, okay, what, because for some of you, you may just now be joining <laughs> us course. and you don't necessarily know historically what we're referencing, but when we first moved in, we had the bookshelves on the TV wall, mm -hmm. and over here we had that long groaning board table, and I was thinking, incorrectly, that the TV would be over the fireplace or in the corner. So then, before I made any kind of big commitments like that, I brought in John, which is another reason to hire a decorator for making big mistakes. Again, you can use people on a large scale. I, I have my strong opinions, mm -hmm. as, John, as John knows, um, but, but, we, <laughs> but we work. And somebody also commented, oh, Linda, you know what you want. Why even refer to a decorator? Well, because I'm not a designer. I mean, I'm not a decorator. I, I have, I hope, pretty good taste and I have an idea Wolf. of what I like, but in terms of scale and things like yeah. that, I am not. Likewise, you also are a good gardener, but you nevertheless, when you do things and at your Spanish bungalow, mm -hmm. you consult designers absolutely. about the exterior of your home, even though you're a very good gardener. And I, and I absolutely have opinions about it. And, and, and have, we don't always do what they suggest. Right, but, uh, right. But it's, but it's very much a give and take, and it's like a mutual brainstorming, I think. And that's what I was going to say. I think that's important to, to don't just think of a designer as someone who comes in and tells you what to do or does it for you. Right. They really are, are listening to your ideas and just talking you through it and making sure that's really what you want to do. And yeah. sometimes, you know, I or somebody else may have another spin on it um, or just some, you know, some icing on it that makes it better well, and, and other, it's just something you didn't think about so, the other thing um, is and why it was so helpful for you guys to comment so much and please do comment and subscribe and hit the notification button <laughs> um is because what i like about it is is it's mutual brainstorming yeah. so we talk about things and Stuart, when we before we got started filming, we were talking about different things about the coffee table. Yes. And you were saying this and this, and then I said, oh, but this and this. And you ultimately came around to- I'm on Team Linda on that one. Yeah, this yeah, and so. ultimately you said, but it was through the, the process of walking through uh -huh. the constraints, the practicalities of it, the navigation of the room, that solutions, optimal solutions, um, very personal signature touch solutions become obvious to you. Don't you love friends who remind you of the brilliant things you've said in I the do, past? I do because I'm, I'm so bad about not remembering things like that. And then when you say it, I'll know. But, so tell me what it was. Well, I think it is, I have said it so many times in garden design and then you put it in the context of interior design uh -huh. and a lot of you were concerned and you talked about the glare oh, yes. from the big picture window on the tv during the day well um the brilliant thing you said was you make design decisions based on the time of year mm -hmm. or the time of day or the context in which 
you use that Absolutely, space. Absolutely, you do. So I, this space during the day, unless my family's home or whatever, probably won't be used a, a whole lot. Um, since we've moved in, it's only been used at night. We light a fire, mm -hmm. it's real, or maybe very early in the morning. Um, neither of which time did we have the TV on, but we do like to watch a movie or a documentary or something at, at night, night, at which point glare is not an not issue. issue right? So while for many of you that might have been a constraint, for us it wasn't even a consideration and I didn't want to make a long-term decision mm -hmm. based on something that for me doesn't issue, exist right? or was a yeah. short or was a short-term consideration people being here during the day watching TV. Well, and it still may be that as you've lived here a while you may want to do a screen shade on the window. Oh, just yeah. you know, there may be yeah. other reasons you want right. some of the, just for privacy sometimes. Yeah. Um, so, but I, I, I agree with you that, and it, we often do, and I think we said this before, we make design decisions based on something we do once a year or maybe even not at all. We just think we're going to do it. We think so we're going to do really it. It's really important to live with your space and to see how it's going to work. And, and I don't even know, do you even know what happens if you turn the TV on in the daytime? No, because I've never so turned not the TV issue. on in the right. daytime. So, so uh, it's not, but you know what? I, I still want to talk some more about this room, but that's a nice segue to a lot of comments people had about another room. So we'll come back here, but let's go to that other room and address a lot of input we got. Okay, that'd be great. Okay. So another thing that was on the list was how you were going to use that front hall closet. Uh, well, it's not a hall closet, the front closet by the front door. Front closet. And you, of course, thought, and it would be a brilliant idea to make it a mud type room. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of people talked about, well, that's your front door. Is that really where you want that? Or, um, and I had said, you know, with the window in it, this is too good to be a closet. So we're going to set that one aside. But we, have, but we did, do need to talk about where a mud room can be. So now that this, the great room, has kind of morphed into what it has, there is space back here to create what you want to be a mudroom, I think. Okay. Uh, so what are your what do you think about that? Okay, do you think so that might work? First of all, this is this is a great tip that if you don't like I don't have a dedicated mudroom. No, you do not. But but you have dedicated gardening boots. But, so. but I have lots <laughs> of very I'm very dedicated to them. Right. Dedicated gardening boots. And 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 so but the, the tip is sometimes if you don't have a space, you make a space. Yes. Or you you partition off an area of an existing room to make a space and you press it into service for that reason. Yes. And for me, it's a mud room. The other reason that that makes so much sense, which you have pointed out to me, is this is the door we'll ultimately be using more it will be. than the front door of the parlor, mm -hmm. this is the one we'll be using. So in, a, a, at any rate, this is where I'll be schlepping in and out. And it would be a long trip to take your wet garden boots up it, there. It, it, you don't it, want to do that. It so would. Okay, so what, okay. tell me what so, um, solutions you've come and, up and, with. And I have a solution, and some of this came from viewer comments, you know, but um, this area by the back door makes perfect sense. And you've already started it. You've got a coat right back here. It's a great place to put the winter coat. Okay, coats. let me, because uh, uh, I want to ask uh -huh. you, my husband just put this here. And I thought, oh, is this a wet in the way? Is it too bulky or whatever? Well, but in no way does it, work? Does it impede yeah. coming in 
or going out. Absolutely. And it could go a little bit closer to the bookshelf yeah. if you wanted to. Yeah, I think so. But, but it doesn't. And it looks cozy and just it, appropriate. And it, yeah, and, and it's the uh, right scale. Right. Okay. It is. So, okay. so I think that's the start of it. But this space on the other side of the door, I could see you building maybe a, um, almost like a long table, maybe six or seven feet long, and okay. make it kind of high, the top of it, so that underneath you could create, do a, a tray uh, for all the gardening boots and that sort of thing. Um, you could even have a narrow shelf under that if you wanted a place to stick stuff, baskets or something. But so more, more akin to like a bench table? Kind of a bench, but taller than a normal bench. Okay. Uh, so that the boots look under, because some of them are tall, aren't they? Tallish. You know, what comes to me to mind to me are those ones that you see that are a bench and they've got those square cubicle things. Yeah, and I don't know if you want square cubicles. I think you want it to be a little more interesting than that. And I want it to be kind of rustic, I think. Yeah. And, and you know, I don't know whether it's made out of some kind of reclaimed wood or maybe reclaimed wood and, and Ooh, use, your, use, your, use your contact who could work on the dining room table um, to create some kind of a base to hold that. Yeah, you know? I love um, the idea of reclaimed wood mm -hmm. and having something look kind of rustic. A little bit rustic, a little bit garden, like yeah, uh -huh, garden furniture uh -huh. or something. Very um, English. Very English. Okay. And then I still think keep the chair here um, so that you can sit down and put your shoes on, take them off. Another place to sit your handbag or your tote right. or whatever. Because we talked about uh, a landing and launch pad. Absolutely. Kind so it of still area. would be that. And yeah. it's not impeding on the table by the sofa. It's not impeding on the bookshelves. We still have a dedicated bar, which we probably should point out in a minute where that ended up. Um, and then the top of that would be a great place to put plants. Uh, I can oh, see yeah. topiaries so, and amaryllis <laughs> and all the things you do. I wonder what um, gave you that idea. I don't know. Um, and, and which brings up another thing. We, we had talked about whether this should be casement windows or mm -hmm. uh, French doors and all that. And I think the decision's already been made by you and Jamie that it should be casement windows. And it really does make sense because it allows you to create this mm -hmm. mudroom space. Um, you get to use the space. It's not just a walkway. And this door over here really does function the best for yeah, in yeah. and out of the house. So, and I think, um, and I can't remember if we told you that ultimately, and, and the other thing is expense is always a consideration. So let's not just talk about, oh, we have deep pockets and anything we decide to do. Um, we are, we got one estimate on this and it was pretty high. So we're getting more estimates mm -hmm. on it. It may be something that does not happen immediately, but to get it right, Right. Even though I am all about instant gratification, <laughs> we, you know, we may have to wait. But what I love is casement windows. First of all, there are casement windows in the front of the house. Yes, there are. So it would look as if it very much was appropriate to mm -hmm. the vintage of this house. The other thing is we have lived with French doors in multiple locations and they, they're they beautiful, but boy, there's a lot of cons to them. Mm -hmm. There really are. Um, practical cons in addition to having to clean all of those individual, individual well, that, and, and then just changing the window, if you start changing the opening, you get into the masonry on the outside. and The costs just really add up. And is it really worth it? Especially if you're not gonna walk through them. Um, yeah, know, the so. other ones that we had that yeah. sat by the dad chair, we seldom ever use those doors. And and for the reason we even wanna do it is first of all, this doesn't this doesn't in any way speak to the vernacular and, and the integrity of this house. But also because for my husband, it's all about that that blending the inside from the outside and feeling the wind on his face. So so that will give us that inside outside feel. Absolutely. The other thing is is I just I, I just find them very, very charming. Uh, but then when we came up with the idea, and I don't know if we shared this with you, of tra of of switching this out ultimately for a Dutch door. Which I think it'd be great, right. Which I think will then give us the idea that same indoor outdoor feeling. Well, and feeling. it's very cottage like. It's, and, yes. Um, and that would be an easy, like, to open the top of that door and let air in. So, yeah. Um, yeah. It, it'll be really functional. And, it, and again, we were talking about scale a while ago. The scale of this will fit the room better than creating a great big wall of windows. Yeah, I think um, so. Too. You know, floor to ceiling type thing. So, yeah. Um, yeah. you just and, don't need that in here. And it makes it possible but for me. But this really will be very useful. To have a, yeah, to have a mudroom here. We talked about maybe making a great big boot tray and mm -hmm. putting it underneath. But I think oh. it can be very fabulous. And then you just sit in this chair. These chairs belong to my second mom, so I love oh, okay. them. And put, you know, you put yeah. on your boots, you take off your boots chair. or whatever. And then um, I need to get probably something in this area where my husband can kind of dump his, 
you know, his stuff, his keys. His, well, I still think even on the top of that table, you'll have some baskets. That's and, true. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I, I don't that's think you true. want it over here. I think you want to keep this for okay. when you're okay. in here in the evening. But you know, yes, keep, sir. keep it all back here. Yes, so. sir. And, you know, I mean, as silly as this might be, you know, the, you've got some room right here if you wanted to do some key, something for keys to go on because, you know, we can never find our keys. My husband, in addition to being archaeology obsessed. His brother was a naturalist and we have lots of beautiful um, antlers and things like that that belong to his brother that a lot of which one of his best friends uh, was a curator at the San Francisco Zoo. Oh, so okay. before we get lots of you know, complaints about that kind of thing. The animals would die naturally. And, these are... and, and my brother-in-law inherited a lot of them, but I can just so see some of these pieces hanging there with my straw hats. With your hats and, on the right, that'll be great. Yeah, yeah, I think that um, will be very fun. And then speaking, oh, speaking of garden boots. See, there, and that's why I think this, well, I guess they're not <laughs> as tall as I thought. So it probably could be bench height for the top of it. Okay. But I feel like a little bit higher, we get it up under the window where you can Put plants on it better. Boots? Don't you have taller boots? I have taller boots. All right, well, yeah. then. Yeah. Well, well, I think higher well, have to. Right okay, an, another, <laughs> another tip. You measure things. Yes, you do. Based <laughs> on their application, based on the height of your suitcase storage, based on, you know, those well, different. And, kinds and my point of is, I don't know that you want to sit on that table. No, 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 no. Yeah, I think yeah. it should be appropriate for what needs to go yeah. in it yeah. and then use the chair for but sitting. But I so. think the width yeah. is more where yeah. I'm coming up with the bench. Yeah. Okay, so then the the last thing, and you, you approved, you gave me affirmation on it because uh -huh. I had this piece in another location. My drawer has sunk in um, from the move, but I had this in another location and I thought, okay, we can't have the book bar over here with people getting drinks and stuff in front of the TV or right, whatever. Right, that would not work. So this secondary piece moved in here and you condoned my... I think it's great for a bar. And it, it that is a very long wall. So you've now divided it into two, if not three sections. Mm -hmm. um, and But the bigger one being around the TV and that's where you'll eventually do some stuff. But this is a good, great place. It's in the passage on the way out to the door it's not going to totally block it if, if you because have 10 people ten, over. Yeah, so this would have really been a problem if 10 yeah, or 12 if people Yeah, if I had originally had right the here, book right. bar over here, then constantly people, yeah. yeah. They really would have. So, yeah. Anyway, so I think this is brilliant. I think it's going to work so, well. So a brilliant uh, idea. Yes. And I and I do love it. And even though it's dry January and everything, I, I love barware. Still even like if to look I didn't at it. drink, <laughs> I just love barware. Yes, I, I love agree. crystal and things. Okay, so let's end let's end on this, I think. Okay. Because I'm getting a little overwhelmed. Um, in my in my other home, one of the things that Hubs and I do when we travel, the souvenir we typically bring back is a map oh. of wherever it is we go. It's portable, it's lightweight, it's easy to bring back and it you know conjures up fond memories mm -hmm. so we have a collection of maps that have been framed and in my other home i had kind of multiple map walls now something i i don't ever think i really had an official version of and i have always wanted is a huge gallery wall mm, that would be great mm -hmm. so i can see tell me if you think i'm crazy i can see a montage of our maps of some of our old like parchment certificates, mm -hmm. um, some of our black and white photographs. I can see that really in the expanse of this wall. I can too. I think that would be really terrific. Um, and, and, and it, one of the things that provides that was also brought up in the comments is that this house is all white inside mm -hmm. and your furniture is warmer. And uh, even though there's there are lots of neutrals, it still has a more of a warm tone. So covering a wall like that would almost provide the same idea as if you were painting it or putting right. up a wallpaper or something like that. But yeah. it's not changing it. It's just it's just the, yeah. you know the, the decoration and, instead. And it, and it grounds it. It grounds I it. Think. And then our my real hope by you doing that is that that TV just disappears even more. Yes. Um, you know so that it it just is that not really noticed. And I think it looks what another okay this is brilliant thing you said number three um, is. I don't want anything to really look contrived. Exactly. I want it to look organic. Well, like... and, and the good thing about that is you can keep adding to it. Yes. If it's organic feeling. So, um, yeah. you know, it'll, it'll go forward, move yeah. forward. And, and, and in the context of this, uh -huh. right. this well, TV. And if the TV ever goes away, then I just put more maps. Put another one up. Or, right. or whatever in that in that spot. So I think that'll be fun. And it will also, with with 
the frames and everything will bring in these warm absolutely warm yeah the, the bookshelves won't be the only dark piece of furniture in the room at that point yeah. i don't think yeah um, and give and give this visual mm -hmm. give this visual weight plus so, i just love the way they look i hope and i get I, to help you with that i think that okay, would be so well, much fun to duh, put that out. well <laughs> duh because well, as we've said you know how to do things so well but, do, but you know. john is it is one of the things you do okay so we we have well Stuart, do you remember uh, the English garden that we went to not long ago at Susan? At Susan McCalmont's on Culbertson. It, 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 so it was in Lincoln Terrace. In Lincoln Terrace, in my neighborhood. And it was with Roger. And we went over and we saw oh, that the, the, fabulous... The in yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, we saw that absolutely. fabulous English garden. Yeah, well, she has an art gallery. She uh, does. And you did the gallery walls. Well, I, I got to do two of them. I, I don't work there, but I did get to... It's a new gallery, so I got to go and, and she and enlisted me to do two of the walls. It was great fun to do. So um, I'd love for you to, to see those at some point. We'll have to go over. Yeah, you said you could probably. Yeah, so. You have an inn, so we could get an yeah, invitation and then, there. And then you probably remember at my house. You know, I have, I think I have three in, in my house. Recently, one of which I took down, completely down, the whole thing down, uh, laid it all out on the floor. Or oh, I didn't lay it on the floor. I laid it just all out. And then um, used my, I'm not going to give my secret away yet, but used okay. something to put it back up there okay. to see it before I hung them. And then we hung it. And I was able to get five more pieces of art up. Um, and, and I think the wall is more interesting because it is a little more organic looking and the spacing is not all the same between things. Mm -hmm. I got a little obsessed about that when I was doing it and I never liked it because they yeah. you know, it, it, it didn't it have, looked contrived. It looked contrived. It did. And this is so much better, um, I think. So, and I, I bet in the video it shows the old one and then now you can see the new one. I can see so the new we one. Can probably, we'll, we'll have yeah, we'll look to, at all that. We'll, you know what, we'll just go back and see John's house again. Okay. But, because you do you've done, you've done a lot. <laughs> well, and you've done, made well, a lot of changes to the garden. So we, we will go back and see that again. But I also, I, I love that it'll, it, uh, and I love the fact that I can I can inject a little bit of color. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm somebody that really likes kind of a monochromatic palette with pops of color. Yes. That's my how I like it in my garden, and maybe seasonal pops of color, uh, but with with a palette that I can kind of change. And one thing that I had wanted to do, and I even put this in the community tab, is I really, really wanted to channel that botanical green, like the color yes, of, that, of that candle. candle. And I, I couldn't make it work in the front, but back here, it's very, it's, I, I noticed it everywhere in Singapore. It's very Singaporean because it's that botanical meets all of this kind of aesthetic. And you have assured me that I can do that Absolutely. here. Absolutely. And, and again, even though it's, I mean, green's considered a cool color, it will warm up the space, you know, mm -hmm. to add the pop of green. And enliven and, it. And enlighten, enliven it. And it's a great contrast to the, you know, the African and Asian things that you've mm -hmm. brought in. So I, I'm anxious to see you try that. So, and you know what um, it will be fun for us to do then is it will give me a reason to go thrift and just look at anything in that color. I don't care if it's a skirt, if right. it's a drape, if it's a whatever, so. if it's something. And, and that will be a fun little day trip. But another one would be to go to a big fabric showroom. Oh, yeah. You because when you're just me. making pillows, you can splurge. I mean, you can yeah. find some really interesting fabrics and, and just have these little, and some people call them jewelry when you add pillows to right. a room, you know, right. and you're all into your jewelry. So this would be the way to do the room. Yeah. Um, but that could be fun too, just to, to kind of just not pay attention to what things cost right. and just pull samples, you know. Well, and and um, remnants. You and, can find you can inexpensive find remnants, too, right? remnants that you can transform, if not so. into a 24 by 24, then into a lumbar pillow Absolutely. or something like that. Which is that. a much better way to do that than buying a sofa in, in a green color that Someday you may think this wasn't the right, right. thing to do. Yes. So, um, yes. I, I love the idea of that, though. I agree completely. Okay, so at some point, I am going to show you the ingredients so that you can help me come up with a recipe. I love that. For my gallery wall, and more importantly, um, the how-to of how, of how you okay. do it. That'd be okay. great. Okay, have we answered all? Well, I think we, well, there are things, but you know when we're in other rooms, Hopefully, we'll talk about more videos. Uh, uh, more videos. Yeah, come. yeah, because you on forever guys, and ever. I just love how you are taking such ownership <laughs> right. in all of this and have given us such great ideas. Great and brainstorming or whatever it was you guys said earlier. And and thing. you've already adapted some of those, you know, and made changes from what you originally thought when you walked in the house. Yeah. And and I think that yeah, is somebody a, says, a, oh, you already know what you're going to do. I no, I don't. I mean, I think I know what I'm going right. to do, <laughs> and I tell John I think I'm going to know partly because I. I want his affirmation. <laughs> I'm insecure that way. But he can either say, okay, that's a great idea, or he, he puts it much more gently, or what about this? And then, and it's, and, and I think we'll end on that note. Okay. It is, it is a mutual 
what about this? Absolutely. And that's what it should be, which makes it fun. Yes. It really does. And it can always be changed. That's right. Thank you, my friend. You're very welcome. Good to see you today. Good to see you. that are fans of my friend John Terman and his beautiful blue and white Spanish bungalow right near the Capitol in Oklahoma City, then this is for you because you have so kindly invited us into your home to show us your holiday de decorations. I'm so glad you guys could come by today. Oh, it's just, it's it's so fun. And you and I were talking, I, I would say if there's, because I did a little preview first, if there's an overarching thematic to kind of your holiday decorations, to me, it's wreaths. Yes. Lots of lovely things from your grandmother and vintage and mercury glass. Yeah, lots of shiny things. Lots of sure. shiny things. Right. So, and obviously, if we're going to start anywhere, we have to start out with of a course. tree. So sure. this is just this is just wonderful. Now, you are a, a proponent of, of artificial trees because you guys have allergy issues, and as a designer, you know the value of something that is enduring. Yes. And, and it is one of those things you can start early with it and it can stay up till epiphany and you don't have to worry about the drying and the watering and all that stuff. And, yeah. and it's an investment, even a live tree is. So at least this carries from one year to the next. So. And live trees, for a lot of people, yeah. a lot of people commented that they're so expensive this they are. year. They and, really are. Yeah, and they're not enduring. Mm -hmm. And also, if you're going out of town, then that could be exactly. an issue also from a fire hazard so, perspective. Well, but, oh my gosh, John, uh, this is just lovely. Well, that's 60 years of collecting, so. Um, before I could collect, people collected for me. We were given ornaments every year as kids, you know, to um, just one of those things that eventually when we were, became adults, we would have at least a start of a Christmas tree collection. And that's exactly what happened. So, um, and my grandmother bought some pretty cool things. Uh, I'm trying to see. Well, now when some, you say you refer to your grandmother, is this your maternal grandmother, your paternal, paternal grand grandmother? So paternal her grandmother. Her name was Eunice okay. Terman. Look so she's a Terman. Um, and you know, there are things, I think she may have made the one you had your hand on. Um, there were some great, I grew up in Eastern Oklahoma and there were some great stores in Tulsa that had really beautiful decorations and she would often buy something there for us. Um, and then there are things like, like this little mouse over here. That's one of the first ones I remember ever having. So I am pretty yeah. sure it's close to 60 years old. Um, and of course he always gets pride of place. This ginger man's one of those. Um, and you don't see things made like, especially the ginger man anymore. Okay, now, uh, can we just focus And then those on are these? from Tulsa, from Miss Jackson's, you know. Oh, Miss cool yeah. Jackson's. Yeah. Hey, the, if, if in the comments, if you guys are from the Tulsa area or whatever, and you remember Miss Jackson's, by all means, let us know. Absolutely. These are really special, I think. And very, then, very special. And then, you know, in the, in the 90s, I started collecting some Radco things and some Old World Christmas and... Um, these, there's a collection of these animals that are from Virginia, from a craft fair that we collected over several years. Lots of, uh, you've got obviously lots of blue and shades of blue to complement your existing exactly. decorations. So. And it really, it fits in just seamlessly. Thank you. It so, really, and, really and does. I've, I've never picked a theme for a tree because I like to be able to buy pretty mm -hmm. much anything I want and yeah. it'll work. And I don't feel like it, um, I mean, it's just a nice traditional tree. It's not something that goes out of style. Um, you know, some years it has more ornaments than others, but. Uh, now talk a little bit, if you would, because you talked about how you finally were able to find LED lights, yes. the twinkle lights and the C7s in warm tones. The, the, so finally, I'd been looking for a couple of years to buy a new tree, but I wanted a pre-lit with LED. And for so long, the LED was that bright blue, uh -huh. white color. It just doesn't look uh -huh. good in the house. It's not warm. So this year, I finally found one that I really liked um, and got this. And then it came with the white lights. And then I added the C7s, uh, or C9s, I think they are actually. Are C9s? These are smaller. These are okay. C9s. These yeah. are even smaller. Are so C7s ones. are a little bit bigger? They're the bigger okay. one. Anyway, but, um, and with the LED. So um, it's nice now. I don't have to worry about, I mean, I actually put it on the timer finally so it can come on and go off. And I used to kind of worry about all the heat uh -huh. from, especially the C9 lights. They got hot. Um, so, so this is this is kind of a quirky question, but this, these are the C9s. Are the C7s the ones that what we think of as the traditional Christmas bulb of the 50s? Was I, that the I shape? Yes. Yeah. Well, no, it's still the shape. It's just bigger. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So. 
Well, it's just, it is absolutely, it's, it's beautiful. And then I want to point out very gingerly, Stuart, if you can, because it leads to my question of the day. Uh -huh. I'm going to guess I know which camp you fall into, John. But here's my question of the day. When you decorate your home, do you remove what is there year round and then add your holiday uh, decorations in their place? Or do you embellish what's already there with Christmas baubles and Christmas decor? So what do you do? Well, I try to do the latter. I try to um, just embellish what I have. Um, in some cases, like where Stuart is right now, that um, it's a cheese dome, I guess. Anyway, normally it's filled with seashells. So I did take out the seashells and put in the mercury glass, but I don't have a place to store the big piece, so it works well just to leave it there and do something with it. I really just like to layer in Christmas. It Look, makes it easy yeah. to do when you're putting it in. Uh -huh. It makes it really easy when you're putting it away. Right. Which uh, I increasingly yes. is is a concern, I think, to all of us. But in so for my question of the day, let me know if you incorporate Christmas decor into what's already out or if you actually put what's already out away to make room for festive And a lot of people do that. Decor. They have really mm -hmm. large collections of Santas or whatever, and they'll yes. empty all the bookshelves. Well, can yes. you imagine if I tried to empty my bookshelves? Yes. So, and, um, and if you do, this is a tip I learned from my friend Elaine. When she would I, like redo her mantle or, I don't know, a dish rack or something uh, like that, she would take a picture of the way it was before she removed everything and put in her holiday decor. So when she had to go back and recreate that vignette, she would remember how she had it arranged right. and, and, and how I do she that too, especially it. with my clients. When I, I have a couple that I help decorate for Christmas and, you know, I don't exactly remember where everything was, so I do that. I may not always put it back exactly like it was, uh -huh. but at least it kind of reminds me and, yes. you know, we, it gives you a nice uh, visual clue. Well, and especially uh, if something is form fit yes. to, a, to a display. So. And then, Stuart, if you don't mind showing there's wreaths in every window and I love that. We just saw some of these wreaths at Mockingbird Manor and this is exactly what I had in mind mm -hmm. on how to use them. How, ma how many windows do you have and how many wreaths do you have? There are probably, I think I have about 20 wreaths. There are like three windows that I don't put them in that they don't fit. Um, but they're really simple and, and it's just a, a band of ribbon link, you know, uh -huh. linked through the wreath. And we are fortunate that our windows are, are double hung. So I can literally just lower the top window and put the piece in and close it up uh, in most places. There are a couple of windows we open throughout the year, so I put a thumbtack in those, you know, just to hold it. But very simple. Very, um, very simple. I, for my outdoor ones, I put grommets at the top yeah. to just yeah. slip over And then when I store now. these, I actually take, I took uh, the tube out of paper towels and cut it. And so I just roll that ribbon around that. So it keeps the ribbon smooth. Yeah. Um, so it's really great easy. You're, idea. Not, you're, not, you're not redoing ribbon every year, which is a nightmare. And, yeah, and dust free. Um, yeah. But I, I love the uniformity of that. Yeah, that is a theme throughout the whole house. So you'll see reason all the windows and all the rooms. And then you have, I noticed just, just little trinkets. You have angels and things that some of which probably are out year round, but some obviously. Of them are, and some of them are, yeah. Um, now, because, you know, obviously this is all about garden-inspired right. living. This is about garden-inspired living. Look at this gorgeous bird's nest fern. Oh, my word. Look at all that new growth. This just makes me salivate uh, with envy. Good. It's yeah. so, so beautiful. You said this is really old? I've had it for old? seven or eight years, and it was fairly small when I got it. Actually, it was in an arrangement where somebody had done several live plants together, you know, in a basket. Uh -huh. And that's the one I kept out of it. So I've, I've kept it along. And it stays inside most years. It stays in all year. Occasionally I'll put it out on the porch. And this is south sun. It doesn't get too much sun for you here? Not in the winter. Even though it is south, I think it's... We keep our house cool for one thing, too. Right. So they like that. Um, it's We don't have a real warm home, so I think that's part of it. But generally it's a little bit where the Christmas tree is, so it's a little more uh, uh, protected from yeah, the weather. Yeah, it's, it's really, uh, really just, just beautiful. Yeah, I love a, a gardening touch in your house all the time. If something live, I think that's... Yeah, so important. Um, I, I agree. So. And well, and you've got also live poinsettias around. Yes. You've got lots of, you said these were very, would, would See, you say another, these were 60s or 70s from your 70s. grandmother? Was, my grandmother bought it, but it was in the 70s. And that's a Christmas tree topper. Um, and you'll see another one in the dining room that's actually on a Christmas tree. Um, but they make great little, you know, just decorative yeah. accessory things. Again, well, I, I'm pretty sure that's from Miss Jackson's as well. Well, and what I love about them is they speak to different eras, or at least those eras where we grew up yes. and experienced our child. Absolutely. Our, our so, well, that was on the top Christmas. of our family tree for yeah. many years. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, and look at these. These are very, very dear. 
Yeah, and I found you, those at Mockingbird Manor many years ago. So. Don't you love Mockingbird yeah, Manor? Yeah, it's one of my favorite places to go. Just, Just even wonder, be inspired. So yes, uh, shop for ideas, and yes. then you always you always end up coming home with something. Oh, you do. Absolutely. Yeah, we just so. recently did a little tour there. Oh, did you? Okay. Of Mockingbird that. Manor, and they had just so fun things. You said you thought these were Italian. I think they're Italian. Uh, just paper, press paper. I think there's a label on. Yeah, made in Italy. Yeah, and so. the fact that they can be so probably, and they, this is what's cool. Talk about storing things. <laughs> they go like don't, that. Don't you love the so, brilliance of I that? I know, and I'm sure these were designed for tourists because uh -huh. you know that would be so easy to slip in your suitcase when you're. In Venice. Well, you know what? Um, if I were in Venice and I were a tourist, I would, I would I will look for these several, when I go. I, know. Venice, I would slip so. several of those, several yeah. of those in my suitcase, so. and and then this is one of you've done one of my very favorite things to do, which is working with your existing decor, just taking whatever wreaths you can find, whether you make them yeah. or sometimes these are Christmas ornaments. You said you thought this was a napkin I ring, think it is, yeah. and you just slip it over. I love the expression. <laughs> I love the expression on this face. Like, whatever. What happened to me? Yeah, right, just so. put that wreath on me. Whatever. But, and this is a great example of where I didn't touch anything else on this chest. I just added that wreath to it. And you immediately saw it. Which, yes. you know, it's a little touch of Christmas. Little so detail. I think that those are important throughout the whole house. And it speaks to your your signature touches, your Christmas signature yes. touches of, of wreaths. Okay, now let's go to the next area. Okay. Well, as I have done many times, this is where I come in, yes. your front door, which is so, so charming, and behind you to greet me. This is a really realistic faux wreath. Isn't that great? And that was kind of hard to find. I'd found the small ones, but all the other windows, but I couldn't find the right one for the front door. And finally, this year on Terrain, which is a, a oh, company, Shop Terrain, shop terrain Love they terrain. had this and I tried it. And I really, again, and you can't see this on the outside, but there's one wreath outside on the chimney, which a lot of the viewers who saw this before will remember I had a very plain chimney. So you see a wreath outside, that's the start. And then you see one here. And then yes. you come in and you start seeing yes. one all the windows. But finding this one was tough. So it was a, I, they were always too big mm -hmm. or too thick. And to get a, one that fits on here and then to go behind the storm door was tricky. So, well, I think um, it, a wreath that permanently is your focal yeah. point for when you come in, it's worth investing a little bit more. Yeah. A little bit more in that. So here's a here's a question for you. I, I, for me, you know, there are traditional, just iconic forms of Christmas. There's the wreath mm -hmm. form and the Christmas tree form, and I definitely fall in camp wreath. I do too. I I really do. So there's something about that conical shape that I just don't love as much. Yeah, and the, uh, just the continuity, the, the softness soft, of it. Right, uh, and it. You know, wreaths can be used lots of times of the year. They're not just a Christmas item. So mm -hmm. I think that's part of why I like it too. Yeah, oh, I could um, see this beautifully oh, yeah, you could decked out in the spring right. with spring Put a different blooms color and ribbon, things. All that, yeah. Yes, and right. then here's another angel. It is, this obviously probably came from your grandmother? It did, and I, I think she probably purchased that in the late 50s or the early 60s. It looks very um, 50s to me. It does, doesn't it, yeah. She had a, a living room that was blue and purple. And then she, at Christmas, would use pink in there instead of red. Um, so she had. You must have uh, gotten your flair for uh, for design course, from absolutely. from your yeah, grandmother. It, it somewhat innate. Um, anyway, but that was one of the pieces that I kept from her collection of things, and and a whole pink Christmas thing is a bit overmatched, I think, at this point. But in the fifties and sixties, it was it was it was, it was kind of the thing. Well, so. what I love about the fifties ornaments is is for those of us of a certain age. That is nostalgic Christmas mm. to us. It was the, it was the Christmas of the fifties of of that iconic movie, The Christmas Story, and yes. the Red Ryder BB gun. Mm -hmm. To me, that was kind of what really signified the magical it, it, the magical right, so. um, aura of Christmas. And then over here, you've got uh, We Three Kings. All right, that's an estate sale find again. I think from the sixties, so some late mid century Christmas. So. I'm going to have to up my game on estate sales. <laughs> I, 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 go to lots of, I do lots of thrifting. I don't do lots I, of estate and, and sales. There, there are two different things. You're absolutely right. Yeah. So, and I think, you know, I paid a dollar or two a piece for those. I mean, they were really inexpensive. Um, but they're, they look handcrafted. They and do. They're just they beautiful. Do. In fact, they kind of look Italian to me, too, the way the mm -hmm. paper and the coloring and everything. When I was in high school, I worked in a gift shop. I don't know if you remember Nomi's Ark in Edmond. I and I worked in that gift shop and we sold things Did like yeah. uh -huh, We sold things like that. Okay, let's go upstairs because you've, you've got a guest bedroom and another office upstairs. So let's right. go up here. 
Well, I am a huge fan of needlepoint. At one time, I really did a lot of it, and I need to did take you? it back yeah, up again because it's so relaxing. But that needlepoint pillow is exquisite. Isn't that lovely? A, a good friend of mine made that several years ago. And then those are little, um, I guess, china or pottery ornaments sewn onto it. So, What a clever yeah. idea. A really clever idea. And if you don't need a point, sometimes that's something that you can find at the better antique mm -hmm. stores and, and thrift stores. And I would ha I would happily snuggle up as a guest in your well, in your holiday home with yeah. that green teddy bear. I think it's kind of important to give a little something to your guests, um, you know, that's holiday. And right. Just something in there. Because a lot of times, especially this room, they can come up and sit in the chair and and there's just a little bit of festiveness going on so well it's yeah. just a nod to the season yeah. and and plus i think sometimes it's fun when you don't discover everything all at once where it reveals itself over time Absolutely. and you appreciate the nuance and the humor of little touches yeah. of but, and and like in a guest room it's just simple even just to do find some red sheets and put those on the bed for christmas uh -huh. you know and, and I, I don't use them any other time of the year they're just for christmas so it would, uh, it would be incredible to see your house decorated for Hanukkah with all of the blue and the white blue, and the yes, silver and everything. Would it would. However, it might blend in so much. <laughs> well, and that's true, too. That yeah, we, one of the nice things, red's a good accent for the house being blue and white and creams, you know, so the red really does show up. And there's always some red in our house, but um, but of course a lot more comes out at Christmas. So do, are, these, are these sheets out your, I can't remember. No, I never use them except for Christmas. Okay, except I mean, for Christmas. Just, yeah. No, normally the bed's done in blue and white, so. Well, it just is... Couldn't be charming. And then, of course, you've got your statement wreaths. Yes, my wreaths up everywhere. Here. And I was looking in this office over here, and you have you have some of the same needlepoint pillows. Right, I've got that little Merry Christmas pillow and, and repetition the of the wreaths. Right. And then the bathroom windows don't lend themselves to wreaths so much. So those are some Santas I just stuck in there. They fit perfectly, mm -hmm. just just barely. That one just Santa, barely, that one fits. Santa. Yeah, Stuart, that's the that's the pillow that I have, and then I, Stuart's giving me a look like you're move, we're moving ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know that those are going to show up. But look long. at the look at the cute little Santas there. That are just. They look like they were just made for they that, kind of that window. They're even the right color green for the bathroom with yeah. the greens on them. Um, well, it's it's something that older homes just have that is just so uniquely the personality of an older home, mm -hmm. and that's the unique tiles and the unique and colors and, and things of that nature. Okay, you want to go down and go to your we, kitchen now. Go down. Dining room so. and kitchen. Well, probably the easiest way to festivize any room is just put some glittery baubles in a bowl. It absolutely is. So, so that the, that's part of my collection of vintage balls that I, again, purchased at estate sales. And, uh -huh. and actually some thrift stores on those, because for many years you could find those by the box still. You know, yes, not with the, and the box is uh, every yeah. bit as precious. And, well, and you know, I used to put them all back in the box. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Finally, one year I was putting all this stuff away and I was like, okay, enough. <laughs> enough already. So now they go in enough. giant Ziploc bags. <laughs> well, I um, was looking for just some plain baubles the other well, day. I, they were in short supply. I couldn't are. find and, any. And the old ones, I mean, like I used to pay 10 or 25 cents a piece for them. You know, they're like 3 and 4 and $5 oh, now yeah. for just the plain ones. Yeah. So yeah. it's really crazy. So I'm glad I did it. I'm glad I bought them when I bought them because right. they, they, I probably wouldn't do it now. Well, you've got little so, Santas and yeah, just, bows. And, it, you know, again, one bow makes... I mean, I didn't touch anything on here right. again. Just out of that bow to that, and it just it's makes that a little pop of red, yeah, and it, it draws your eye. So. That real pop of um, red, and then over here, you've got this wonderful, and I love this idea. Talk about a, a real hack, and that's using a, a quilt or, or a, a blanket spread, or right. anything as a tablecloth. So this is an old bedspread, and fortunately, it is finished all the way around with fringe, and. Um, I'm assuming it came that way, I don't know. Uh -huh. And again, this was something my grandmother used every year. Um, and we used to eat on it. It's, it we don't anymore because it's, it's uh, kind of past its prime. But it makes a great, you know, just an everyday cloth to be on there. Yes, so. and I love just uh, the, I yeah. love the red and white, which has kind of been my, my color theme yeah. for, the, for this year. Now, this isn't holiday, but I have to comment on these marble Aren't those fruits. gorgeous? Yeah. Oh my word, these are exquisite. So, and that's one of those things that are 
always out. Um, but at Christmas, I like to pull some things around so you see them in a different way. And they kind of look like sugared fruit. That the texture yes. on the marble kind of gives you that look. And I just think they work well with that. And then, and in here especially, I've pulled all my mercury glass out from uh -huh. various spots. And um, there, are, you know, things on the table. There are things over here. These are usually in the front window in the living room. Um, yeah, for many, many years, I, I made huge displays on a tiered stand of sugared fruit oh, yeah. with sugar, gilded uh, it's gorgeous, sugar. It? It, it's, yeah. it's gorgeous. But it's but a lot it, of work. But it's a lot of work and it doesn't last very no, it long. Doesn't, so. Okay, so there, and you, I recognize something. Do you from see your, your basket? Pop color there. Yes, <laughs> yeah. I do so. see that basket. So I will say that that was, um, a, I don't normally put poinsettias in here, but this year I decided I want to do something different. And I had them and I was like, I need the right thing for these to go in. And your baskets were sitting and I was like, I'm going to try this. And I wasn't sure it would work, but it really does. No, um, it, it, I love it. it. So it's, it's very you, John. Well, it kind of yeah, is, isn't it's, it? So, it's very you, John. Um, so and now then, I'm looking for a new home for my Christmas cards. Usually there's a silver tray there with all the Christmas cards, cards in it. On and, it. And I don't know where that's going to go yet. So Well, fortunately, we don't, have as many, we don't get as many we Christmas don't. cards as we, we used not, to. So. Um, Okay, and you've got a wonderful. So, right, and so this is kind of the tree that I've done with all the little ornaments on it, just so you can see them better. They get lost in a big tree. Uh, but another one of those cool um, tree toppers that my grandmother bought, um, again, Miss Jackson's in Tulsa. How long did it take you to put all of those on there? It's a while, and you do it in phases. You do it, and then you uh -huh. kind of walk away from it for a day or two, and then you come back and put some more in. Yep. And, um, and you know, I'm always tempted just to put a, a sheet over this or something and see if I can make it stay, but. I'm, I'm still a little You're chicken still, with that. So, well, um, I, the other thing is, is I think when you do it in installments, yeah. <laughs> installment decorating, is then you appreciate more each and every little well, bauble and absolutely. the story of each and yeah. every and one. I, and Christmas is one of those times when you really do think about where things came from. You and, do. And if it meant something to you or not. And so that is, it's kind of therapeutic if you like that sort of thing. To put all this stuff back on individually, yeah. you know, and taking it yeah. off is not quite as much fun. But um, And I think, I think increasingly now, I you kind of give yourself permission. I used to think every single thing had to be done every single year. And now I don't feel that way anymore. It makes it more special when I don't do some of the same things every year. Well, and I will tell you this year, for, especially this year, um, I did far more than I had done the last two years. So I had kind of gotten to where I just did the reason in the window, which believe it or not is enough to make you feel like it's Christmas. Yes, yes. Uh, but then this year has been fun, and, and I've had more time at home. And well, it was just and last nice. year was yeah. COVID. I, it was I think crazy. a lot of us. And we knew maybe. we weren't going to have people in at all last yeah. year. So. Yeah. Um, and another thing I did this year, too, as I said, I bought a new tree for the living room, which is larger than the one I had. I used to have three trees. So I was able to consolidate well, down to two, two, which that took a lot of time out of, of the whole situation, which was nice. So, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm going through all of my yeah. Christmas decorations and really curating them to see what I want to keep uh, and what I don't. I have, I have a, two totes of need to go away ornaments, yes. but I can't let go of them yet. So. Well, last, you know, increasingly I just use, I do use most, I have a live small, but uh, I have a live tree and live greenery. And the, the reason I like it is because once it's done, it just goes into the compost pile or it's just discarded yes, and I don't really have to pack it and put it away. I think all of us try, whether we're older or younger or whatever, we're trying to, in our own way, simplify Christmas mm -hmm. and its execution because it is, it's a lot of work to, to make magic. It is, it is, it really yeah. is. So, it's, and, and even though, I mean, I, I have simplified this over the years because I used to do a lot of greenery and a lot of berries mm -hmm. and garlands and a lot, you know, a lot more lights and all yeah. that sort of stuff. And it, that just takes so much time. So, right. and you know, I used to like decorate the chandelier and I would yeah. do the staircase oh, yeah. and, uh -huh. and then I'd be sitting there a week later thinking, this is just too much. It yeah. just, it is. Yeah, so, I think picking and, um, picking and choosing right. and is, I think something that we all constantly kind of struggle. Yes, what's just the right, what's just the right tone. But if I had a, if set. I had, you know, if, if I didn't have any time at all, I would have just put the wreaths up this year. And it would and, have been. And that would have been plenty. Yeah. I think. I think it would have been. And still especially if we get as much yeah. snow as we got last year, just please not that hard freeze in the February. The angels that um, Stuart's looking at now are from a local artist here in Oklahoma City who made those several years ago. Susan King, did you Susan, say? Suzanne King. Suzanne and King. And she started, she used to do them um, with children. And they would all make a funny, happy face on them. Uh -huh. Well, I like the angels, but I did not like the funny faces. Well, so, kind of scary so these were commissioned without faces. So they How just funny. have a plain face so that they you know, are a little more serious Christmas ornament. But I'm sure there are lots of kids in Oklahoma City who have these who, who help make them and, uh -huh. and decorate uh -huh. them and all that. Uh -huh. so, and that could be special. Uh, yeah. Your kitchen always has so much color in it just naturally. John, well, I don't know how much stuff you even have to really do in yeah, here. And that, it I add that, of course. Stiff. I get another little 
thing, a little bobble, um, did the wreaths. And of course, our kitchen table is always Christmas because it's red. Uh -huh. So um, didn't have to do anything there. But you've got another beautiful okay. poinsettia. I, I am, poinsettia is one of those Christmas holiday plants that I run hot and cold on. Dear. I just, I think, you know, you can see so many really sad ones. Well, that's what I'm going to say. You have to buy good ones. You have to you buy good ones. You can't go to Lowe's or Home Depot and buy <laughs> the two dollar ones because they just they don't last and they don't look good. They're not pretty. Yeah, and um, I I, but yours just they almost don't look real because well, and they're just right. so and gorgeous. I will say when you buy them from a, a good nursery, you know the color is usually really intense. Mm -hmm. And they last. I mean, I, I feel bad in the end of January when I just finally throw them away. Yeah. Because I'm, I am sick of them by then. But it's such instant color. It is. And um, we keep our house fairly cool anyway, so they, it's a pretty good environment for them. I think if in a really warm house, they don't do real well either. So yeah. um, you're right. There are lots of sad ones in the world. But, and um, then speaking of holiday plants, now yours doesn't necessarily look like it's specific to the holidays, but you've got a rosemary over here. And that's something I always encourage people that'll quite often ask, where do I get my topiaries? Mm -hmm. Where do I get, um, whether it's cy lemon cypress or it's a rosemary topiary, or in some cases even boxwood. Well, Christmas time, the holidays, really an opportune time to search them out it because is. a lot of times they will be available as a holiday plant and if you can keep them alive right. if you can keep them alive for me then they just make a beautiful topiary no, contribution really and of course mine's not in garden. any sort of form and, and that was just from outside you know that i used out for the summer but i always bring it in and mm -hmm. it generally makes it to get back outside yeah. just doesn't look too good on. but generally does and well, then of course those are the little topiary starts that you brought me um, next to it. So oh, I do those recognize yeah. those. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I did little... put them in clay pots. You, yes, no, as, as I suspected <laughs> right. you would. As um, I suspected you would. So anyway, but and again, I think things from outside in the winter um, add to the holiday spirit. Oh, I, I mean, it's, it I doesn't do have too. to be just all Christmas stuff. And of course in January, I love these just as much as well when all the red's gone so yeah and it like um, it livens up the inside really does, of your so. house this year well i don't know about your little microcosm here but in my yard i still have not had a freeze no. and so i lots of my topiaries and things they're still outside which i'm while i'm nervous about the fact that it's so warm it is nice that i don't have to bring them in so right. their indoor sabbatical will not be so long well, that they'll I suffer waited until like the week before thanksgiving and i finally brought the succulents in that i wanted to keep and um the rosemary came yeah. in then i think too there's still i mean i think i'm going to keep my uh plumbago i dug it out of the pot and put it in a yeah, plastic you told me you were gonna and try it's to sitting do that. out there and i wondered last night whether i may have gone one day too long we'll see well um, there's you know the thing is even if it freezes there's so much if plants aren't elevated there's so much residual heat yes, on surfaces so. whether but, it's and the other cool thing the geraniums over here in our east oh i know they've never been they are stunning in fact i think you can <laughs> see from the window out here Stuart, when you go by and i almost want to bring it in because they're such you know beautiful red color for christmas yeah uh, it, but i won't so yeah can i don't know it? Stuart, can yeah, you get that? a little glimpse of them i know and even it's it? december i know we should not have these at all <laughs> so um it's it's you can definitely see them Yep. <laughs> that, speaking of pop of color. No, it really is. And then in the master bedroom. So again, fit, my same tricks. Change fit, the sheets. Fit, fit for a king. All right. We have the, in a bowl. Yeah. Yeah. Stuart, can you see this very regal bowl <laughs> of, of handmade ornaments mm -hmm. that you say may be... I think they were probably... Kit, kits. kits, okay. Um, and again, grandmother who did so many things did these in the '60s, and um, and there some of them were kind of in '60s colors, especially the the teal one and the pink one. Okay, so pick uh, your favorite, John. Well, I sort of am partial to this green one. This with green all of one. This stuff hanging off of it. So and, you know, you could you could really, if you were creative, you could really. And you know, something like that would be gorgeous used at Easter. On the table, uh -huh. or, it's very uh, Marie Marie Antoinette. It is right. It really is. <laughs> yeah, so. Stuart, which is your favorite? This one? The dark this green one, one. yeah. It's more manly. It's more manly. <laughs> I kind of, I, I, I don't know. Well, I'm the just, color on that one's so intense. Oh, yeah. and I didn't see this green one over here. Oh, my gosh. Well, the, the textural contrast of the velvet and the, you know, the yeah. sparkly well, ribbon and the sequins is and I very really think, fun. You know, someone who is, who is far craftier than I could take custom jewelry and ribbon and things oh, yeah. and make some really cool heirloom uh -huh. type ornaments. Oh, wouldn't this be uh, a, 
wouldn't this be a fun way to trick somebody for an engagement ring or yes, something right. is to have it on here and say, oh, look, that's especially yep, really sparkly. Would, so. Anyway, I think they're pretty creative. Stuart's laughing. Yeah, Stuart's laughing, you yeah, yes, Stuart's you laughing at me. Yeah. But wouldn't that be? Yeah, like, wouldn't that be a idea. fun idea? And I wonder how common they were because I don't. I've seen a few over the years, but never a lot. So I've never seen any quite this ornate. Yeah, so I and, and I also don't. I don't remember seeing them with the velvet, hmm. the velvet underneath. But then you've got your traditional wreaths in these windows you've got more more mercury glass yeah more mercury glass baubles and it's just and and then earlier you were talking about yes you do I, I, don't you just love the primitive yes vibe i do that's a of these vintage ralph lauren blanket but these checks that I pull out at christmas and stripes together and Stuart, you were saying you had this. Where did you have this it, as a wallpaper? In my old bathroom. <laughs> did you just flash back to your old bathroom and growing, yeah. growing up? It reminded me of my grandfather. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Memory, actually. Yes. Yes. Very, very fun. I see an, another Italian Christmas tree. Yes. So I, do, I think it's important to put things in rooms where you are often in them, you know. So mm -hmm. it's a nice little thing in the morning when you're getting dressed to have. A little Christmas cheer. So, yeah, yeah, uh, to kind of get your day started. Nothing major, just started a little right. something. So. And then I have to end up here because these are just wonderful. First of all, I, I adore campaign furniture. Isn't that great? And this is an especially beautiful oh, version of one. And then your trademark blue glazed blue pots with those fabulous succulents in them. Really, really and, beautiful. And that table was another estate sale find, and I didn't really have a place for it. So it's really been in the storage. And just this fall, I figured out I can use this for my winter plants. Yeah, um, and it's, so I brought it in. So I'm glad that, I got it. Let's see. Does that face north? It is north. Uh -huh. Will they get enough light there? Do you think? Well, I hope so. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. We'll so. see. But um, typically, I have kept those in the storage place next to the garage, which gets very low light and gets fairly cold. Now last year, things did not survive that because it got too cold right. for too long. Right. Uh, but these were so beautiful this year, I just really wanted to bring oh, them they're the house and they're, they're just um, a, so we'll see. a beautiful, a beautiful yeah. appointment. Well, we'll end on that on that last sweet little wreath hanging above the succulents. I can't thank you enough, my friend. Oh, it's so good to see you. Uh -huh. Thank you for coming. Merry Christmas. And you too, Stuart. Merry Christmas to you. <laughs> Well, here is your fashion epilogue for today. My earrings, I just got these yesterday at Target and I really, really love them. They're lightweight and yet still make a statement, I think. My top is thrifted, it's Ralph Lauren. I got it at Goodwill. And here is a tip about a really, um, if you're ever struggling to find out what to put with or pair with a bottom, whether it's a skirt, jeans, slacks, whatever, always a crisp, white shirt will do the trick. And so I have a whole wardrobe of crisp, that's hard to say, crisp white shirts, most of which I've, I have thrifted. This one is thrifted, it's Ralph Lauren from Goodwill. Um, as is this fabulous, fabulous skirt. This, what you talk about a find. I got this at Goodwill for maybe $4, and I wanna show you because it still came with the tag on it. Look, you guys. It was a $256 skirt, never been worn uh, from, what's the place called? Art Fashion, Art Museum, anyhow. It even still had the care tag for it attached to it. So this is really in the category of a great score. I love this skirt. It's got, it's got that, um, that real Western vibe that I like. My boots were a gift from Hubs from last year, my cowboy boots. My necklace is homemade. A friend of mine and I made a bunch of these kind of boho necklaces a while back. And Stuart, we have a request for you to start highlighting my bracelets and showing close-ups of my bracelets a little bit more. This one I got at, I don't remember where I got it, and I don't remember where I got this one. This one was a gift from my sister. It's one of those drawstring bracelets, and my ring came from Madewell. So there you go. There is my fashion epilogue for today. Um, okay, so I love this I love this room. You made the comment earlier that you do lots of high-low. Yes. 
And it's hard for me sometimes to tell the difference between the high and the low, which is a mark of brilliance on your part. So give, give me a couple of high-low examples in okay. here. Okay, well, um, a couple of the pieces of furniture, like the black chest over here, actually belonged to my parents. And it was a, it's a very nice piece of furniture from the late 60s. Uh -huh. um, I have no idea what, you know, what they paid for it, but, I, but it's a good brand and you know, it was a nice piece, which I kept um, when my parents um, dismantled their homes. And then um, this piece behind you, the um, okay. Can I? Sideboard. I'm going to stop yeah. you there because talk, speaking of seasonal, and that, that's a whole topic <laughs> I want yes. to talk about. Oh my gosh! Don't you love that? It, that is just incredible in symbolism, in and just absolutely everything. But who knows what, right? Um, and I don't use it seasonally. I that is an estate sale find, and. Um, it is. It was done in the 70s. When I took it apart, there was newspaper that had been padded in the back. So I found a date. It was done in the 70s, I think. It almost looks and as it's as if it's. Excuse me for interrupting. As if it's material, but it's paint. No, it's paint. Um, and I'm assuming that it's a young person's artwork. I don't know. And the funny part is, I found it at this estate sale, and I really liked it. And it was very badly framed, of course. And um, it was ten dollars. And I thought, mm, no, I'm gonna pass it. Well then, later that day, I kept thinking about what a great piece of art that was. So of course, I was the first person in line at the half price on the next day yeah. to get my $5 piece of art. So, <laughs> so this is definitely low, Score. right? Score! But it is really a cool piece. And I really, you know, I don't know, I see, I see it for Thanksgiving, you know, Pilgrim. Oh yeah, um, it's and, one of the most right, um, memorable right. things in your house. Thank you, I think it's pretty cool. Uh, and then I love the, this, the, the contrast with this Asian-inspired chest. I do too, you know? yeah. But, um, Anyway, yeah, I'm glad you noticed that. That's funny. No, that is so. just brilliant. Wait, anyway, but the really low thing in here, which I think is pretty cool, is we had had um, some antique dining room chairs that had uh, cane seats. And of uh -huh. course, you know, those cane seats don't last forever. Right. And it's so expensive to replace all that now. So I was at Target one day, and on the end cap, they had clearanced their Windsor chairs. So I got, well, of course, I could only get three at the Target I was in. So, yeah, so I had to keep working on it. <laughs> But I ended up with eight of these chairs, and they're you know they're they're just very um, useful and sturdy and much more comfortable than our antique and chairs. They and they have a real shaker quality. They have a shaker quality, but also the... a Danish quality. They have you know they yeah. pull the '70s back in and the '60s. Um, but they match brilliantly with your old primitive right. cabinet, and I love the quilt on the so, table. So it's and I'm sure you to know that. our little store Sukasa. Oh, yes. Uh, so I oh, am yes. a fanatic of the Conta quilts that Lynn oh, imports. I know. So they're everywhere in our house. But, and occasionally I'll see one of her posts and there'll be a quilt in the background and I'm like, I have to go get that one. It's so cool. Um, anyway, but that's what this is. So, um, and it, you know, they're reversible. And there's always interesting things on the, well, that one's not quite so reversible, is it? But um, some of them are very different on yeah, the opposite side. They are. And some of them uh, are real vibrant in tone yes. and some of so, them but have I love more how of a they, historical you know, they look. Piece, pieces on it. Well, this it's, is. Yeah. It's, it's funny so it's that a, you and, and again, they're very inexpensive, so it's a great way yep. to, to do a tabletop. And, and for those of us who want to really deconstruct what you just said, spell that for people so that they will know what to look for, because there are various sources of them. They're from India, are they They're from not? India. Yeah, they're and from I, India. And I, you, I may be wrong, so someone will catch me on this, yeah. but I think it's K-A-N-T-H-A, -A, yeah. and it's pronounced Kanta. Yeah, I believe uh, so too. A lot of people will say Kanta. But yeah. I think it's Kanta. Yeah, one of my, my, I have few regrets, but one of my regrets that I have is my son lived in India oh. for years uh -huh. and he... You should have boatloads of them. I should have <laughs> boatloads of them, um, but, but I don't. I have other wonderful things, yes. but I don't have some of these. But this, interestingly, this is one of the things that I want to infuse in my own decor when you come mm -hmm. in, you Good. come in, because I can so okay. see these with some of the, well, uh, and, as pillows. She's a, she's a great source, right. Um, you yeah. can do pillows out of it. I actually, they're often not really large in size, so they make good tabletop things, but I found one in Dallas at a store that we all used to love, Wisteria. Oh yeah. That was large enough for our bed. So um, it really, you know, it's that a king a size, fine. which was a real find, because well, they I, are hard to find. I think that's uh, the mark of a good decorator. First of all, you're opportunistic. You always have your eyes and ears open for something that has potential. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna give a little shout out to Lynn because Lynn, you're probably gonna be watching I this. I hope she will. Yes. Love you, girl. Uh, <laughs> she has a wonderful home in the Paseo District, yes. which is a historic district here within spitting walking distance of my house. That's a Spanish 
architecture. Oh, when, right, from the same time period yeah. as this house. As so. this house, just, oh. just wonderful. And she's got a needlepoint shop there with fun little gift items and everything. If you're, if you're coming in from out of town, you definitely want to go to Sukasa in the Paseo district. So I also, you and I were commenting on the fact that you do not have a rug in here, and I love that. I don't have a rug in my dining room either. Yeah. Well, for practical reasons, you know, it makes a lot of sense not to have one. Uh, in my house, it also works because there's so much around us that, mm -hmm. again, having a simple, quiet floor um, is appropriate. And I think it helps show off the other things in the room. Right. Um, yeah, in, in gardening terms, I call that negative space. Yes. I need to have some negative space, Absolutely. and I, I have way too little of it right now. I need to go well, home and work on I don't have a lot that. of it, but yes. yeah. I have some. So what are these interesting? So those are called magic sticks, and um, a, an artist friend of mine made those many years ago. Uh, but they're, they're, she works with found objects, that's kind of how she does her sculpture. And these are vertebra mm -hmm. bones, and then she carved these um, sticks out of, I think they're redwood or something, and she used a bandsaw. And then it's all covered in rice paper. And then she embellished some of them with little things, so. Um, Talk about texture, and oh, and my uh, husband yeah. and, would and, just go crazy over, because he's a huge anthropologist. Oh, is he? Well, and, and it's just, again, in this house, it's like, what are those? Because there's nothing like that. You know, it's just interesting, I but think, they and different and contrast. But they don't stand out, right. No. But they, um, and I kind of, I think I probably liked them when I was really in my Santa Fe mode, uh, you know, and I thought they had that vibe, but, but that's kind of passed. And so they still work as an art piece, though. Yeah. There's something everywhere you look. Now, this this kind of crosses over from your sweet thing, so this must be it a love. Sweet. It is sweet, but it's my great grandmother. I was going to say, I bet it had <laughs> it I bet it had a story. Yeah. And it always sat up on something like a cat will do. Uh, you know, surveying the room, so. And I bet it just, again, jettisons you back oh, to your does. childhood Absolutely. to see right. it. Yeah, I would not buy it, I mean, you know, so, today. So this is both, we're going to come into the kitchen, and this both feels very much like it speaks the same language, but it's in a completely different, refreshing well, uh liberating way so okay. come in here because because it's got a different spatial awareness well the scale changes in here the scale changes so this is this is the transition point between the old and what we call the old and the new house um, and the first part of this room really was the original kitchen um, the back door was a window um, the kitchen sink was kind of right in here where this countertop is there was a window here so it was a, a very narrow galley kitchen um, had some interesting architecture features. I mean, the ceiling is sloped, kind of a shed roof on the outside. Um, so then when we decided to make the addition, this became our china room slash yes. breakfast room, and then a new kitchen, which we all we needed and wanted, so. It's got a, a sensation of dining in a butler's pantry. It does have that feel, it absolutely does. So, so and this is where you've got all of your fiesta wear, um, so more of your blue and white. I'm going to take a leap here and say you've got kind of an obsession with China <laughs> dish, dishware. <laughs> Look at the color on so, that. Yeah, that's Russell Wright, American Modern uh, from the 40s, I believe, maybe late 30s. I love that chart. Do you color. and your husband entertain a lot? Uh, we would like to say we do, but I know. You know, we don't. So part of the reason for doing this room was we had amassed all these dishes and um, we wanted to be able to see them. Uh -huh. And um, so we can at least do that and enjoy them. And then we really do, just for the two of us, we use this yeah. all the time. I mean, I realize it's just two plates or something, but we are enjoying it. And, and using and then, special um, things. And yeah. the, the other thing is, is if, it, if you need some kind of rationalization for having a kind of acquisitive personality, that's that's not just functional, it is also artistic. Absolutely. So it's it is every bit as beautiful as things you've got hanging on your wall. No, I agree, and I love it. And you know, it, it, they started the the shelves were neatly put together and you know kind of arranged. And then as we got more and more and more, it just has become it's really it is storage, but it's still really beautiful. I think to yeah. see it and those shelves and the cabinets contain it. Yes. So again, you you're not uh, seeing total chaos uh, when you just look at the room. Well, it's got a, very much of an organic vibe to it, and it also is indicative of the fact that you actually are using your pieces. Mm -hmm. yeah, really do. And you've got silver that I bet also gets used. And we're getting, and I, I would, 
probably also guess that it's going to be used more because we're getting ready into one of the nice things about Oklahoma is if the wind isn't blowing and it's not very, very hot, we do have a pretty long season of outdoor we dining do. when we can live outdoors. And so you've got so many great outdoor spaces. And, and we use all these things outdoors too. We don't just use them in the dining yeah. room. So yeah. we're not, we try not to be too precious with all that stuff. Yeah. So is this pink spode? That is actually... Uh, what is this? Johnson Brothers, British yep. Castles, which is a really popular pattern that comes in the pink and it also comes in blue that a lot of people collect. I've and then, and then there are some in the stacks, there are some spade pieces and things yeah. that I've collected. At one time, I had a really dark um, red bedroom and um, all, a lot of this china was on the walls, which, you know, was a really pretty and attractive thing. Yeah. So. That would be more probably how my dining room looks now. So this goes out into to your secondary kind of a courtyard, back door, back entrance, maybe garage, where you bring right. in your groceries, that kind of thing. Thank you for having some beautiful flowers. Just, well, we did entertain this weekend, and that's my centerpiece for the dining room. Okay, so. that's, that's wonderful. And, and, and you always like tips, so I, this is one of mine. Um, when I designed the kitchen, I had always wanted a place to have flowers in the house that you know that I would enjoy every day. And the dining room table is really not the place. I mean, right, yeah. you pass by there, but you really don't. Uh -huh. And the entry hall doesn't work so much. So when I, I intentionally did this and said I'm going to always have something on the counter, whether it's um, a flower arrangement, you know, from the weekend or something I just got out of the yard, or um, you know, when pumpkins are going to mm -hmm. be out mm -hmm. here soon, there'll be a big pumpkin up here. Yeah. Just something to enjoy. And this is the one place we are a million times a day is well, standing right it, here so we get to enjoy it. And I think it takes a tip kind of from restaurants and bars and things that they always have a place, one central place yes. where they always have fresh and usually it's kind of extravagant. Yes, or, it or is. Done, and this is, this is just, this is just beautiful. And so the, the other thing is I, I notice on, pra, on a practical level that even though you like layering in things that you have lots of functioning workable we space yes. so so you you like to cook don't oh, we you do. Absolutely. yeah you cook yeah, a lot do, so yes. so this is just a brilliant kitchen and so and another um, high low thing these two pieces of granite were in our old kitchen and when we did the new kitchen I was like I hate to throw that away so um, we created this storage rack out of um, you know metro shelving yeah restaurant shelving great place to put the 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 nice cast uh -huh. iron so you can see it yeah. and you know of course that's so heavy it's hard to get in out of the cabinet right. anyway so it's out but anyway these tops became uh, very useful mm -hmm. for the kitchen too and provides a little contrast to the to the black so well and is is just a nice take on an island on a kitchen yes. island without with it being looking a little bit more old and, and right it fits in the house a little less yeah, yeah a little less maybe suburbia and and you've got the beautiful windows and the shades and it's just it everything just works together beautifully um, so it is it is just so gorgeously curated and and and, and again intimate it feels very cozy now what one of my favorite things that I, I'm anxious to show you about my house that you're gonna I, I'm, I'm gonna guess you're gonna really <laughs> be jealous of okay I have a wood burning fireplace in my kitchen. Uh, in your kitchen. In my. Oh, how wonderful! See, and that's such a useful kitchen. place to have it. It is. You're in there. Oh, and, yeah. and you know, the, the the ridiculous thing is, is we've got these houses, and of course, compared to contemporary houses, my English tutor isn't that big. Right. But no. nevertheless, where do we live? We live in this tiny little area in my tiny kitchen and breakfast area where the yes, fireplace no, that's, is. That's, that's where we, yeah, we, right. we, we live our yeah, entire life there, which is a real, I think, a consideration for people if you're building a house or whatever, where do you really live? Right. No, you I know, agree. It's, it's and, those kind of spaces. And spaces. So. so, again, brilliance in design for not only how it functions, but also how you age in place. The fact that your master bedroom is right near the kitchen. Let's go right. and there. That, that was one of the things we wanted to do um, with an addition was to, to try to be able to age in place. So the yeah. master bedroom getting on the first floor, the getting the laundry out of the basement, um, those sorts of things. Having a shower that you can walk or roll right. into. Uh, so Absolutely. Very important design considerations. So. And and you've got pieces that just transition beautifully from kitchen so you've got an assortment of both kitchen items but also pretty items mm -hmm. with additional storage that you've got that leads you into this so where you're brilliant. walking through linda now was the back door uh, oh really that was for the back door so this is how you pop out into 
what is now the master bedroom and sitting room. So where was the kitchen? So it was along there that where the china and all that. That was the kitchen. Oh, that okay. Was the kitchen. Okay. And then you and expanded then, it and out so then we came this out way. To I got gotcha. you. Okay. Uh, very but good. But that hallway that you just came through was here, um, and we where the door is now was a window, and where the door into the bedroom was the back door, so to the house. And you've managed to make it even though it's a passageway, you've still managed to make it functional space because there's storage. Oh, absolutely. In, I mean, in this little. But it also foyer. provides a transition from the kitchen to the bedroom, which is a little tricky when you're adding onto one of our old houses to get the transition right. So uh, that it so you don't really feel like you're moving from the kitchen to the bedroom, but you are. But so. you are. And it's okay. But it's also. It's also handy at night though when you go to get ice cream. So. Uh. <laughs> It's also handy at night when you come in and you're absolutely exhausted. You yes. just come in that back door and you just right. fall into bed. So. so, oh my gosh, this has, I love one of the things that I'm passionate about. I love a British colonial mm. look. And this room has a, that, a real it? British colonial vibe. I like the fact that you made no apology or whatever for putting the TV here in your bookshelves. That's just. I think it's what we do. And so you just have to do it. Yeah. Um, I find that when I go in homes where it has been hidden, it's usually some cabinet and the doors are gaping open and it just really draws more attention yes. to the fact that you tried to do something and then to yes. let it just kind of disappear into this. So, yes. Um, and, like and, but this also has a modern sensibility, so it does not look necessarily out of place. Right. No, and I agree. it so, looks. And my, when we designed this, I, of course, loved the living room ceiling. And I wanted to echo that in some way back here, but I didn't want it to be so heavy. Um, I mean, right. I think sleeping under all that every night would be, you know, not a great feeling. So um, we did the wood again and did the beams, but then we decided to just paint it all. Um, and of course, the beams are not nearly as massive as the ones in the living room. But I and think very it, much an indoor-outdoor vibe because they've got. You almost expect these to be French doors that would go. That and, would go. And we outside. talked about that sort of thing, but they get in the way. You yeah. know, when you're in the house. They can. So, and, and we really have enough ways to get in and out. So um, I felt like the windows probably- And maybe from a security sort of standpoint too. Security too. standpoint, we actually do open our windows when we can. Yeah. And um, so we like that aspect of it. And I don't- Cross, nice cross right. breeze I don't here. love sleeping with just a door standing open. I feel a little safer with just a window open. Yeah, so, absolutely. Uh, well, you know. and you're right near the back door. So this yeah. is, but every, every place, what I love about all of your living areas is every place I feel like I could, plop down and be very comfortable with a book and a cold drink or a cup of tea or a glass or, of wine or a glass of <laughs> right. wine or or um a bracing glass of whiskey on ice <laughs> yes uh yeah anywhere and just feel so at just so at home well thank you for saying that that is i think that's a goal is you want yeah. even if you are a minimalist you still want to be able to do those things. Yes. I mean, we're all yes. drawn to that. Um, yes. And there are different um, aesthetics on how that works and what mm -hmm. you want, but you still want a comfortable place and you should have lots of them. Yeah, and even if you're a minimalist, I, I think minimalism and warmth are not mutually they're, exclusive. They are not exclusive at all. So, so. this And is as you come out here too, you see the furnishings start getting a little more mixed. There's some 70s things, some uh -huh. uh, reproduction things, you know, from the 20s and 30s. Um, the sofa is a copy of a famous designer from the 30s, I believe. Um, but then mixed with, as you said, you know, this British colonial type bed, mm -hmm. um, the black chest to the right of it was a piece in my grandmother's and my, breakfast room. my favorite room. things. Oh, um, and when you're not looking, I'm going to snag that lamp over there. Isn't that oh, wonderful? Oh, that is wonderful. So um, when I was in college, I guess, and didn't have funds to buy things, there used to be this wonderful store in Oklahoma City um, at 50 Pen Place, and it was an Asian shop. Oh, and wow, now I'm going to remember not remember the last name. You might not have even lived here then. I, I don't um, think I did. Anyway, um, I always was fascinated by these lamps and her tansu chests that she had. So um, in the dining room, I got a tansu Wonderful. chest that was going to be dumped out at the retail store I worked in. I paid nothing for that. But anyway, this woman passed away, and I was at her estate sale, and this was one of the lamps that. And I don't remember it specifically, but it was in her home. Yes. So it was clearly something she bought when uh, you know she had this store. I'll, the name will come to me later. Anyway, it was a lovely, lovely store. Wonderful touch points. Um, but again, and, and even though I didn't really know her, she lived near this house, and you know, there's just a connection. She yes. was someone in our city who had a, her own business, and it was just, you know, a yeah, really, a, kind of a neat thing. Oklahoma City has a really deep and rich. We may be a young state, but it's a very deep and rich history, and we're going to show an example of that here oh, momentarily. Are, yes. But speaking of connections, it's 
you know, this is a, you may have a lot of stuff. This is an easy house to live in. And, and here is an example of that. Can we talk first a little bit about your floors? Well, we decided to just do stained concrete, um, partly for practicality reasons in the bathroom, and you're gonna see the laundry in a minute. Um, but we kind of, you know, we felt like wood wasn't just great for that. Mm -hmm. We also had acquired this big rug, and I didn't really want to put wood down and then cover it up with a rug. Right. So it just made more sense just to go ahead and stain the concrete and get the dark brown color like the wood floor. Yeah. Um, but, but it's great. And I, the heat ducts run under it, and it actually stays warm in the winter. So you would think it would be really cold. Now that we did not know that was going to happen, but, yeah. but it, does, it, was it, was, a happy it was a happy circumstance. So. And then in the summer, of course, it is cool, and we like that. So. Yeah, yeah, very much. So, yeah. so this then comes into the master bath, where you still, I love using these kind of rugs in. You're each, standing in, on my in, very in, favorite you, rug in my whole collection. I just absolutely love that for some well, reason. It's, it's simple, but the colors are wonderful. And, and you've got large baskets for utilitarian purposes. Uh -huh. I love, I love that. Um, but even in, even in this area, and I'm so glad that you said we could come into your bathrooms because here's so many good little ideas. When you don't have room for a regular door, you've got one of these sliding pocket yes. doors here, and you've got both practical and good looking storage in here. And I like the fact that these, these shelves are fixed. Yes, they are. They're here and they're a little bit they're thicker there. and they're, they're fixed and you've got more pottery in here and it's, it's a walk-in or roll in eventually. <laughs> Might yeah. Have up, but yes. Yeah, I mean, um, was, let's face it, right. we're, at, we're at that transition point in time. So it's just, it's really lovely. Let me get out of the way so Stuart can kind of show that. Um, these are deer. Aren't those great? She's a Seattle, or not Seattle, but a are they Washington. Clay? Are they clay? I think they're clay. And I have a flower pot outside sitting on that table in the sitting area that she did. But um, I love those but I don't think she's working anymore. Better show these, Stuart, or people are gonna ask what we're talking about, these little clay flowers and things here. I have some of these baskets too. Aren't those great? They oh, are great. Yes. They're very fun. They're made, of, like this was, I don't know if these are made out of gum wrappers or I don't know, something like yeah. that, but they're woven. That or comic books or I don't know, yeah. but something like that. Yeah, right? something colorful. Right. Something colorful. And then this is, this is just incredible. I love the E, again, the brilliance and ease of living. So all your bedding and everything, storage is right yes. near your bedroom. And then come back around here, Stuart. And so smart. You have no excuse for being caught up in your laundry, John. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> Ever. Because this is where your laundry room right. is. It is. And it really is convenient. So. This is where the closet is. Yeah. Yeah, Stuart, you 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 MC this one. Talk about the closet. You go. <laughs> well, you have artwork. Even I have artwork. I have some uh, family things that I didn't quite know what to do with. So that model was something my dad had made, and you know we couldn't let go of it. So, but I also didn't want it in my out in the living room. So it was a great thing for the closet. And then the artwork to the left of that is a friend who does some things that I kind of like. And, now this is a. This might be a strange question. Is this um, is this tornado? Can you, it is not. It is not. No, we okay. have a basement in the house, so we didn't really need to do okay. any other um, because tornado stuff. But in Oklahoma and actually all parts of the country really now, need now, really mm -hmm. need to think about a safe place where you can go for absolutely shelter from tornadoes and things. It also, I think, is just a perfect example in here of how you look at everything through an artist's eye. Oh, mirror. Stuart is, <laughs> Did you get Stuart is not allowed to be, <laughs> if anybody sees Stuart, we have to kill them ah, because he is, he is very much a mysterious Stuart. Have, yeah. About 20,000 of them. So, but you, you look at everything through an artist's lens that functional things are also a form well, of beauty. And I mean, this just, when I saw this, this made me so happy because I'm a big hat person. Yes, I know you are. So my, re my retail background shows up in the closet, don't you think? That yeah, I, yeah. I, 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 that I things think, are folded. And I think your retail and... <laughs> self is showing a yeah, little bit. I think it yeah, is. I think so too. So that's just beautiful. And then I want to end on on this historical note because you live in such a historical neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I live in a historical home. It's near and dear to our hearts. And 
Man, this is the essence of the history of Isn't Oklahoma. That great? I don't know if you guys are going to be able to see this very well, but describe to us what this is, John. Well, it's the state capitol on the left where Stuart just started. And then it's, you can see it's surrounded by oil derricks, which is what this whole area was built on. Um, and then as he keeps going to the right, you'll see into the neighborhood. And that's actually 21st Street right in here. And the house we're touring is right there. Um, so we feel like this picture was taken probably in the so early cool. 30s, somewhere in there. You can totally uh, see it. Yeah. <laughs> That's so cool. Wow. And it, this so speaks. Now, for those of us, those of you from out of state who may wonder, no, we don't have these oil derricks. They, I, think there's, I think there's one on the... But none of, the, none of the actual derricks. none there's of the towers. The, right. Yeah, there's the pumps, but, the not, pumps are a but not the towers anymore, which... It looks cool here, but really is kind it would have of been unsightly. It would have been horrible. <laughs> right. um, and it must have smelled just Just atrocious. horrific. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And this is this is very much, we're thinking the vintage of like the 1930s, which is also when my house was and built. The other interesting thing that I don't know the history on, apparently there was a street car. There was a street car. Here. Yeah. And, and I bet it connected with the street car that ran up and down Classen, which is very much near my somehow. house. Yeah. Um, so it it gives us a window into the past which gives us a touch point to how we're we're kind of um we're we're a nice little reservoirs yes. of, of the past in these older homes and it's well, i think why we're so crazy about you know, it and it's such an honor to be a caretaker of something mm -hmm. like this and yeah. to keep it going and yeah. and you know our house is um i guess 93 years old now yeah. and you know it's amazing how much of it is still intact uh, because it has been cared for most of the time, mm -hmm. and uh, of course there's always something new to take care of. But yes. uh, but anyway, I feel very fortunate to be able to. And our um, uh, financial advisor said that um, I'm trying to think how he said this, but anyway, um, owning an older home, a historic home, is a, is truly a cho a lifestyle choice. You pick to do mm -hmm. that, and then to invest your money in it, and to take care of it. Yes. And and if you aren't willing to do that, it's probably not for you. Because it's a lot of work. It's about uh, being a good a good steward. It is absolutely about being a good steward. But the other thing is, is is all of us who have experienced real major swings in the real estate market, up and down mm -hmm. and up and down and up and down. As someone told me, again, it was a financial person, but they're not making any more old homes. No, they are not. <laughs> so they're not making any more hundred year old homes, no. and so there will always be um, an appetite for that, those vestiges of, of history to really reside in history. And I always like to think, you know, like who knocked on these doors and, and what news was right. conveyed through these doors through the world wars and all of those kind of things. So it really does make you feel a responsibility to be a good, yeah. a good steward. And nobody's a better steward than you are. Oh, thank you, my thank friend. You. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thanks guys, I hope you enjoyed this real treat and Thank you to John, who gave us a good chunk of his time. Thank you. My pleasure to show it all. Well, on behalf of Stuart, Leah, and of course myself, the whole Linda Otter team, we want to wish you a very Merry Christmas or a Happy Hanukkah or a Happy Kwanzaa. Whatever holiday you're celebrating right now, I hope that you're celebrating it with loved ones and with your family. And I, I wanna really give you a special shout out for becoming part of my family, for really becoming part of my friendship circle. It means the world to me um, that we have this community here. It's been an amazing year. I am almost at the first year anniversary of when we we purchased the cottage. And it, like I say, it's been a wild Great. ride. <laughs> and now I just kind of want to, to bask in the completion of it. I'm going to spend some time with my family over the holidays. So this will be the last video that you see um, before Christmas and then next weekend we're gonna take the holiday off we're gonna take a weekend off and like I say just enjoy some hopefully what we feel is well-deserved time I hope you do the same we'll probably put something up some flashbacks or something like that for you to enjoy but again I just want to really express to you the warmth and the appreciation and the gratitude that we have for your being a part of this entire little enterprise we have going here on The Garden Life.
Hello in this house, John. Good morning. Hi. Good morning. How are you? I am good. How are you? Good. Merry, good. Christmas, Merry Christmas, my nice friend. To see you. Yes. Now we ran into you recently. You did. That was fun. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah. 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 At, at Goodwill. At Goodwill. Our, yeah. Some of our favorite pots. I'm in envy of those dishes you bought. Are you going to keep those? Are those incredible? Those are incredible. Yeah. Yeah, they're Johnson Brothers. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. they are Johnson Brothers. I didn't know. Okay. Yeah, I think they are. They're oh, yeah. Staffordshire. And yeah. you know, when when you come over, maybe you should come over and we can play. I would and love you to can set that. a table. All right, and, that'd be fun. Because those are really pretty. Well, they kind of go with what you're going to see at the house today that I used for the table setting. So okay, uh, I love this. Yeah. So we'll see. I love they, this. We'll see if they can be combined. Because so, did you get dinner plates or are they all small plates? Uh, mostly they're they're two sizes That's like of salad small. And, and they're two bread. sizes of small and then some sweet little bowls. Yeah, okay. But I love the fact because they read both china but also kind of a bone. I don't. Well, know see, that's what you're you're gonna love this. Okay, I can't I wait. Know. This is gonna be fun. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. So um, I don't think I need to introduce you, but uh, why don't you introduce yourself to our new viewers? Uh, well, I'm John Turman, so interior designer here in Oklahoma City, and. When I lend us friends, yes. lucky me, right? Yeah, yes, <laughs> yes. And as a little tease over the holidays, I think we're going to put up a John Turman playlist of both inside and outside his That'd house. So if you like what you see, and then also when you came over and helped me with some things at the cottage. Yes. So anyhow, I thought it would be fun this time. And again, if you if you are really interested in doing a deep dive, then look back at some of our previous videos. But I thought it would be fun if we started out in the kitchen. This That's time. great. All right. So you told me that you've made some changes. A few. I mean, uh, Christmas just, is traditional here, so I keep doing the same things over and over. But but I move things around. So. But uh, even your basic decor. Oh, my basic you said stuff. You've there's been some, some additions. Change. Yeah, you'll see some things, especially in the living room. But yeah. if you've seen the videos before, you'll see some different things in there now. So uh, okay. it'll be fun to point those out. Okay. So in in keeping with our Tone on tone, which is my color of the month, is tone on tone. Oh, okay. It's not a color. Look here. Look at how, how, is that Fiesta wear? No, that's um, American Modern, which is Russell Wright from the 40s. Oh, my So goodness. he came in like five or oh. six colors. This brown is his, and then that's the chartreuse. And of course, just the fact that it's called chartreuse, I loved it. So, I know. Well, yeah. and it matches your yeah. sweater. And it does just... match my sweater. I almost did the table with that, but it's a little more modern than I wanted for Christmas. Yeah. So well, it would be fun in somebody else's house, I think, to do a Christmas yeah. table with it. Yeah, it would yeah. be fun to do something with black. So it yeah, could, yeah, it, it would be really yeah. incredible. So. Okay, so um, so St Stuart was commenting that everywhere he goes, <laughs> In there's, Linda Vodder land, there seem to be pedestals with chocolate with domes under and chocolate, domes. Right? <laughs> now, <coughs> yours, however, don't look disturbed at all. Mine are constantly. Are oh yeah, there's fingerprints all okay. over the domes because there's so many people. Well, the ones who were, they were the eating house. are over there on the on the counter in the red plastic containers. Yeah. So. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so we'll eat these later. But, yes. Um, well, I think it's one of these things where practical meets pretty. It does. Yes. It does. Yes, and yes, I yes, couldn't yes. get them all in there. As much as I tried to stack high, they kept falling. So. I needed some help. Okay, now help I have to ask: Do you use? Do you did you make these? I did. Yeah. I did. Do you use Spanish peanuts, Spanish roasted peanuts, or do you do dry roasted peanuts? I did. I think they were dry roasted with sea salt. Yeah. So whatever, whatever Sam's had is what I did. Yeah. So. Well, I used to use Spanish uh -huh. peanuts with the red skins. They're hard to find now. Oh yeah, I didn't see them anymore. You're right. So I don't think that you could do yeah. that. I mean, I'm okay. sure you could find them somewhere. Well, but... I think we're gonna make some. Anyway, on, easiest thing in the world to make. Easiest thing in the world. Totally I know, easy. I know. And I was not when I saw somebody do this and they said that what it was. And I was like, I'm not gonna like that. And I mm -hmm. love it. Love it. So, oh, I know. And it's love because it. it's and the hint, the trick is the sea salt. So we're gonna yeah, make some over at the cottage and and I'll kind of share. Okay, so. I know maybe there's not a lot of things that have changed so in much here, in here, but yeah. I want to just point out before we move on to another room, I just love the sweet little reeds. We talked about those last time and your blinds look like mine. They're very similar. Yes, they are. They are. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And I've just, had mine longer, so they're not from the same place. Same but, place, yeah. but, but uh, very similar. And, and the wreath thing is something I do all over the house. That's my, my A signature continuity. Touch signature thing that goes throughout so uh, how are they hooked they, believe it or not those ribbons are just like tucked they're folded and tucked over that and they just caught oh okay. so i didn't even have to use a nail or a thumbtack or anything Brilliant. So, and on Brilliant. the windows our windows drop from the top and i was able just to drop them down and stick them in there and push the window back up so uh, so again, can, no can, nails. Okay, that's a yeah. and an amazing thing that you can actually open your windows. Well, we got new windows. So, yeah, yeah. Well, so that makes a, a difference. little HP thing. Right. But, a little HP uh, thing. We won't go there, no, will we? Um, we won't go there, will we? But I, I always, I love this room. First of all, I just love how, as much as I love the cottage. My triangle is very tight. Yes, it is. And it's a little bit difficult. Mm -hmm. So we have to accommodate. 
that when we when we cook and i love the fact that yours is is a little bit more spacious um and i of course Stuart, if you can turn around slowly without giving everyone whiplash, I just, I, I love that Roadrunner. It's, I, I immediately, my eyes go to it. Well, I, I'm, if you heard this before, but um, I grew up in a home that was built in 1962. That was a mid-century modern type thing. And that, how, that Roadrunner hung in our house. So it was very much part of the, the vibe of the mid-century home. So yeah. um, one of the few things that I kept from that. So Well, it's, um, the color is perfect. But, and I think it's great in the kitchen. I just think it works so well I think so it's well great in the kitchen yeah. and it fits that space so, so beautifully. Uh, one last question, I guess, from a practical standpoint, is your under-counter lighting, is it um, hardwired in? It is. Okay. And unfortunately not LED, so it gets hot still. But Really? Yeah. I'm, I'm, that wasn't... Wasn't popular, I guess, when we did this quite yet. Yeah. So um, I hate that. I wish it was cooler, but well, but it is hardwired. Yes. Yes. Okay. So if if you haven't already observed, <laughs> John is a maximalist. You think? He, <laughs> he, he is an unapologetic maximalist, and yes, and so it's fun. Though I have seen you some of your interiors that are not maximalist. Right, that doesn't mean I have you to do can, that. You you no. can swing both ways. It is really. It it's, is. It's, In fact, I'm reluctant to let people see this when I first start working with someone because I don't want to intimidate them by the fact that, that they think I can only work with all this stuff. Yeah, that's not right, true. So. Right, right. Yeah. So, um, so I think that's important. I think that's important to point out, but it is nevertheless the brilliant layering of everything you do that ends, lends the intrigue, the complexity, and the just, the storytelling. Everywhere you look, it's a, it's a color story, or it's a personal story, or it's a, a story of your personal style. It is. No, it, it, it really is. And that's, I mean, that's why I enjoy all this in, in our house. It's just, it's my life. Yeah. And I get yeah. to look at it and yes. experience it. And, so. and a Spanish bungalow, how old is this again? It was built in 1928. Okay. So we're coming, I think, is that 95 years now? Something like that. Um, so... Getting close to a hundred. I think I think you need to have a hundred year. Oh, absolutely. Party yeah, for absolutely. your house, for your we house. I, I will too. A couple years after that. Yeah. So I think it's really wonderful. John, like myself in Mesta Park, we are subject to historic preservation yeah. guidelines, and so when we do things, we have to, we have to. Pay. That to be approved. We and, have to, and pay. We have to yes, present yes, it. And, be reverential. And, to, yes, we yeah, do. So. Present it. Okay. And we were really fortunate when we did the windows that there was a window that would work. Um, that they would approve, so well, that was great. Yeah, yeah. so thankfully. Yes. Be, and and because it is, it's about retaining mm -hmm. uh, the historical integrity it is. of the house. Let's take a break here and let's move on to the breakfast room or the dining room. Dining room, dining room. room, dining room. room. Yeah, yeah, breakfast room here, dining room there. Okay. Okay. Well, every time I enter a new room, I say to myself, this is my favorite room in the house. <laughs> and then I go into another room. And you find and I'm, another one. And I'm conflicted. Yes. But, oh my gosh. Well, before we talk about the table, let's just do a 360, Stuart, okay. of just the sheer gorgeousness of this room. So tell us a little bit about the artwork in here and your inspirational muse. Well, I, I mean, you know, that whole maximalist thing just makes you cover the walls with artwork, and I love that. So I try to collect art from artists in Oklahoma. So a number of these people are local, uh, or at least from the state. Um, there are a few, couple of new things that came, though, from my cousin's house in Nashville. Um, uh, this piece behind the tree, which I love, and you can't see it because I of the tree. I love that. And then that piece on the right. Aren't those wonderful? Those would uh, look brilliant in my purple. They program. really would. Those are your colors now. And now this above uh, here, I so, have to so comment. That, that was, looks like Barbra Streisand. Well, but it also comes like my mom, and it was in an estate sale in Nichols Hills. And so I picked it up one day when I was there. I was, you know, it just it has this look about her, um, and, and I have no idea who did it or if it was uh -huh. a real person or not, but... Um, so anyway, just a collection of things. That's one of Denise Thwong's prints down there. Who, yeah. You know, is one of our local people that we love. Um, and that's DJ LaFon. My round here. Um, <laughs> oh, I'm not pointing. I can't see what I'm pointing. And no. I just hit the mic. Well, well, well we no, can take right. some, I'll, I'll some B-roll. And then <laughs> Bonanza Hobrian, who I love. She's in Edmond, wonderful artist. And then these prints, this one and the marigolds over there, and there's uh -huh. some in the living room. It's a guy from Muskogee who was a printmaker. He was a florist. Is that the birds? Uh, the birds. Cool. He was a florist, but he was a printmaker. And he's, his name is... Um, Morris Babb, I think is how you say that. And he's deceased now, of course. But uh -huh. anyway, he was a really nice prince. 
Um, there's even a book of his stuff. Wonderful. Um, so I have been lucky and have found, again, estate sales and, and a couple of galleries yeah. and got some pieces. So. so this this image, this portrait that looks like your mom, uh -huh. you know, I have a painting that's one of my most prized possessions that Jamie gave me. In your bedroom. Yeah, yes, in my I bedroom. Love that I've told you that yes. story. I know. Like, yeah. I need to tell you. No, that's um, okay, but I love uh, it. But I uh, love yeah. that because yeah. it looks like my first mom. Yeah. And, and it's, it's interesting to me how how you can feel such affection for someone that's uh -huh. not, well, that you don't know, but is, you know, it was so weird this last week I got a text. You remember my cousin that I brought to your house who was from Chicago uh -huh, with uh -huh. the black glasses right, and right. really yeah. very cool looking person. She was in a restaurant and she kept looking at this guy at the bar and she kept thinking he looked like me. So she finally got up and went over to him and said, you look just like my cousin in Oklahoma. So she took his picture, <laughs> sent it to me. And then when they got ready to pay their bill, he had paid their dinner bill. <laughs> so, uh, oh, wow. But again, she saw someone that reminded her of someone she loves. And it was just a cool little story. And, and the fact that she had the guts act, to go do that. A so. random act of dinner. Yes. I anyway, think, yeah. she got dinner out of it. So. I think that's lovely. I love those kind of pay it forward it stories. So, pay but it we forward often just see other people with with people we're around. So I think it's fun. So, so you, you have no, I, I don't know how you decide what, China you're going to use on a either. daily basis, <laughs> on a special so. basis because, however, I find this interesting and you have no shortage of blue flow, of, of blue fiesta wear, blue everything. Mm -hmm. um, and yet you went a little bit inspired by- oh, By what, what I saw I, from you this week, yes, right. What I said, and so. I'll show those again. But yes, I love the warmth of this. I think it makes a great Christmas table. So, and I'm not a huge fan of Christmas china. Um, I just think that's, and I don't mean I don't mean to hurt anybody's feelings. It's no, just, we just did a whole I, thing I, on Spode, and do people have it? I, do they not? And do I could they? have had it, and I said no, yeah. I don't want it. So I did not take that when I was what was offered. You would not have room. Um, I would, for <laughs> one thing, and there was a ton of it. So yeah, but I just didn't do it. But anyway, this was. Uh, I think my grandmother's first set of china that she bought in the 40s when they oh, built a new house. Um, and it's an American made pattern um, called Rose Point um, by a company called Pope Gosser, which was in Ohio. Uh, but it reminded me very much of what you just purchased. And, and the, in doing a little research on it, the man who, um, won, or Mr. Gosser, was from Staffordshire. So he, you know, was creating an English okay, look same, in the United yeah, States. Very much and so. it was made from the 30s to the 50s. Um, but I, I'm pretty sure that it's what she bought in the early 40s when they moved into a new house. So, And I love um, the bone color of yeah, it. Yeah, of course it is now how many years old. So yeah, some right. of that may be age. And we didn't use it a lot because it wouldn't go in the dishwasher because it yeah. crazes. And you often find it in the thrift stores and it's just a total Crackled. mess of crackle. Yes. Which is pretty, but really probably shouldn't eat on it anymore. Yeah, so, exactly. Um, so I use it occasionally, but I do like to use it for Christmas. So tell me about these these wooden chargers. Oh. The, I am lusting after Are these. you really? I've had those for 40 years, I think. It was one of the first things I bought. Um, really? Yeah, back in the 80s. Okay, so. I'm putting that on so, my hunt and list. And I, you know, I think they're, I think I see those occasionally too in thrift stores. Well, and, I love the, estate um, sales, so. I have the rattan ones. Yes. But, well, I have some cool rattan ones that I only have four of, and I've lost one of them. So I now well, only you, have three of them. Well, if you ever so. need to borrow, if you never, <laughs> okay. ever need to set a table and borrow. Uh, now, before I noticed, I, I'm, I'm starting to ask this. Before we go any further, I noticed uh, you still have your shoes on. We've got our shoes on. Do you want us to take our I shoes do not. off? I, no, 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 okay. no, no. Well, and you know, for some people, that's a real I know, thing. I've seen that. And I say that because so many of you comment on it. Mm -hmm. um, so now. And I get it, but it's just not something we do in our house. So. Right, yeah. right. Um, yeah, we were in a, uh, did a home tour yesterday, and they said, "Oh my goodness, no, we've got two rambunctious <laughs> boys. Yeah. If that ship has sailed, right? That, has <laughs> that ship has so, sailed. Well, and with hardwood floors, it's so easy to keep them clean. Okay, so look that. here, also tone on tone. I know, I love I know. my chartreuse. I think I that's such a great this. accent color for this house. And I um, don't know. Have we mentioned how cool this sweater is yet? <laughs> and, and, yeah, yes, have we? Because it you seems to be a muse of, of a lot of different things. Is this? Um, that's one of the Conta quilts from um, Sukasa. You remember our friend and, Lynn? Yes, so, and I'm surprised you were able to find one in a single color. Well, I'm going to tell you, I was I was there shopping for a client one day, and I was going through all of them, and I opened that one up, and I was like, oh my gosh, this is red and white. I'm buying this. And it's actually red and white on both sides, which is unusual. Yes. Um, so, but I was like, this will be perfect for Christmas. So um, I didn't go to look for it. It just, it appeared. Okay. So, yeah. so let's, let's do a little explanatory thing here. You want to spell that for people? K 
K A N T H A. Okay, and, I, I, and it's pronounced Kanta. Kanta, that's my understanding. So I and, hear lots of pronunciations on it, but I yes, think that's correct. Yes, and, and they're uh, Indian. They're made and made in yes. India, and they're. Um, often made out of scraps of fabric and sewn together. So a lot of mine have patches in them and mm -hmm. various things. And, and I love them. In fact, whoever is creating them really, I don't know if they do it on purpose or not, but sometimes they're very, the colors clash and the patterns clash and all that. And it's right. really interesting. It, so it's I very think it's kind interesting. Of fun. But it is, as you pointed out, sometimes when you want a particular color or something, it's a little tricky sometimes to find, to find but it. But they are not, they are not expensive. Oh, they're very inexpensive. And Lynn has sold Thousands of them by now, I think. Yes, uh, the, yes, and so. and that is from a, a store. If you come to Oklahoma City, you want to see it, um, especially those of you who do needlework. Yes, it's a great. It's called Sukasa. It's in the Paseo district, mm -hmm. and she has all sorts of needlepoint things like that, but also interesting gift items. But I I do love these, and I also like the scale of them. So I'm making a mental note that for my table at my home, the scale of these. That actually would work on your dining room table yeah. very well, I yeah. think. So. Yeah. Um, and you might notice on here, I layered another one underneath just to give it a little more yeah. draping on it. Well, so. and because I like the silencer effects, so yeah. it gives, makes it a little more cushiony. Okay, now I recognize your marble fruit. Yes, I, the video before, we had a, just a big bowl of that on there, and um, I wanted to do something different, and we had gotten a gift of, um, of a wreath, and so I went outside and embellished that. Uh -huh. I, I did my whole crop of uh, Nandina berries because the birds were getting them, so I cut I the rest so of them down. I so miss my Nandina know, berries from the other house. Uh, and then I added some little gem magnolia, uh, and then I dropped that marble fruit in there, and hopefully it won't roll out, but uh, <laughs> we'll see. No, it, it, it looks the perfect, uh, it, the perfect uh, level degree of decay. Uh -huh. Uh, yeah, I yeah. think it's great. So. Yes, I absolutely love it. Now, it, here's, an, here's another question, practical yes. question for you um, that my followers always ask about. So how, with a centerpiece like this, where do you put stuff on the table? Now, well, you don't. <laughs> you, well, for me, right. I keep it there because I enjoy yes. my table in advance. And then when it's time to dine, I remove oh, it. Oh, do you so, remove yeah, it? Yeah, I remove so, it when it's time to dine so that we can have our well, bottles of wine. and. We've gotten to where we only usually have a two people over for a dinner party. So okay. they're usually just the four of us. And we serve the plates from the kitchen. Um, and then if they're eight or 10, which it happens occasionally, we'll just put all that yeah. in the kitchen and then let people bring it to the table. Because I really like to enjoy the centerpiece. And you, um, and you, I think, specialize in, in really small, intimate dinner parties, whereas mine, I'm usually, it's a bigger crowd. We used to do those bigger ones. It's so much work. So we, we have found we enjoy it more. It just have two, yeah. sometimes four. But, um, you know, just keep it smaller and and it's more manageable. Well, I it's think, easier so. to do on a on a spontaneous ba yes, basis. Yes, well, you're right. It I is. Think. That is. For yes, sure. I so. think. Okay. What uh, what other things? I love this basket. Well, uh, those are just ornaments that I've collected over the years at different places. Oh, wow, they're big. Yeah, they're big. Uh, and some they're of those big. are the <laughs> pointy ones are all tree toppers actually, which I got for ninety nine cents a piece. And when you're at, at an after Christmas sale. Oh, so. Don't you love it? <laughs> right. I, so I, I bought them all, knowing they would never be on a tree, uh, but. But they are they filler. are resplendent in this high low kind of yeah. tension between the sparkly and the rustic. Well, I love sparkly things for Christmas, so yeah, um, that's when I added the uh, mercury glass mercury to the glass. table and yeah. and silver where I can. I try to use that. So um, yeah, you can get your sparkle on. Ooh, yeah. love these. Do you mind if I no, pick one if up, I please. touch? This so, is beautiful. And I, I can't. They're made in Santa Fe. Uh, at Jackalope, you know that mm -hmm, big mm -hmm. place. There's uh -huh. a glass. Love place there. that place. I know, and they're not doing them anymore. And I only ended up with two green ones. So I wish I had some some more. But well, um, it's just another thing we need to be on the watch. I am on the watch when for some go, green when, handmade yeah, glasses. When, I want we some. Go, when we go right. through, and they have to be that chartreuse green. I don't want I don't want bottle green. So yes, uh, and it's and it's. I just yes, I yeah. agree. I absolutely love it. Okay, let's take a break here. You guys might need to take a potty break. Go get yourself <laughs> another cup of coffee, uh, some hot chocolate or a glass of wine, depending on what time of the day it is that you're watching this before we move on to the next room. Okay. So I love places. I call them landing and launch pads. Mm -hmm. And it's one thing I really miss about the cottage is I don't have um, an That's entryway, a, a foyer, a vestibule, yeah. whatever you want to call it as kind of a landing and a launch pad. And I love yours because it, the light in here is great. You can mm -hmm. keep your, your door open. You can see your beautiful neighborhood mm -hmm. and your magnificent door. And it's just beautiful. 
So thank you. I think it, it, it's a successful floor plan in mm -hmm. that, that we walk through here all the time. Obviously, it's, it's the hallway, really. Right. Um, it's not just the entry. So it's not one of those places that's just at the front of your house uh, that you don't go in. So it, it is a great place. And before we had the back door that you came in, this is how we entered and exited the house. We always went right. through here. But yeah. when we finally got a proper back door, we... We changed that plan, yeah. but, but anyway, yes. we walked through here a million times. Well, a day, of I love uh, the arch so, here, and this. Uh -huh. What's the? Is this just an adobe treatment? So what, it's plaster. It's just plaster, uh, and it's. I'm assuming it's hand put on, you know, and, uh -huh. and it just has that look. But, um, but yeah, it's on lath, plaster on lath. Yeah, well, it's so. it's really beautiful. And then when you come in, what I love is that you, you've got enough width here mm -hmm. that it's like a room, um, and. Like if you're waiting for a guest, you could sit here to see them come down yeah, the no, path. No, it's, it's a great, or, like you it, said, it's it, a great launching pad. Yes, so, yes. For, and wonderful, obviously, another wonderful canvas for all of your artwork. Mm -hmm. And then, but when you come in, you can look to the left with this fabulous Spanish staircase. Isn't that a great staircase? It's really, it's magnificent. What is behind the So that's doors? a coat closet now. It used to go into the kitchen. Oh, wow. And so it was like a little hallway. Um, but it all, and it also served as a coat closet. It had shelves and hooks in it. Uh -huh. So you kind of walked through this closet and you could come out into the kitchen. Uh -huh. When we did the addition, we, we took that out and, and it, we needed a coat closet. So that's what it is right. now. Right. Uh, but those, and I don't know how long those doors have been there. I don't know if those are original to the house or not, but the opening is obviously well, original. Well, and so. the opening mimics yeah, the opening mimics that this goes one, which then goes to this one. The, so. Into the dining room. Yeah. It's a secret passage. It's a secret passageway. Yeah, it and, it, and it was for a long time. So. And, and uh, then, okay, let's hold off on the magnificent okay. room and, and go in here, which this is not staged, but I not. am so happy oh, to see. Oh, it is really see. not. It is not staged, <laughs> but I am so happy to see a copy. You will. Um, yes. Honored to have one. Yes. So. It's so interesting because I've done a couple of radio interviews uh -huh. about this, You Bet Your Garden and, and another one in, in Ohio, and they said, what were you thinking? thinking that it's in a light color. And I oh. said, it is intended to get dirty. To, be, to have take patina. It, to have yeah. patina, you take it out, you get that good old Oklahoma red clay <laughs> okay. or Georgia clay yes. or whatever kind of soil you have. And then it's it's the patina of where you of are. Right. Yeah, yeah, and I, and I love that. Okay, enough of a product pitch there. <laughs> okay, so this this is where you you work on your magic. This is where I work. Originally, this would have been the master bedroom to this house um, on the first floor, which is great because there's a bathroom and a closet uh -huh. here. Um, but, but it makes But it's tiny. Oh, or, well, not tiny, it's, but It's smaller. bigger than the two upstairs, so, you know. Is it really? Yeah, yeah. And, and I think it feels smaller because of the way the windows and the doors and all that are. Um, but it is the primary bedroom of the house originally. Uh, no longer and, that. And so the primary bedroom had a door Access that went to, to the that, outside, that so, to that charming little porch. Yes. Okay, that's brilliant. So it really is good. But it's, and when I first moved here, this was kind of the TV room. Um, and then when I started working from home, it became my office. So, But I also think, I, don't, I really don't know that anyone ever used it as a bedroom because this wall of shelves appears to be kind of original to the house or at least from, mm -hmm. from an earlier mm -hmm. period. So... Um, I guess she could have had a bed coming yeah, off you could of have a bed this there. wall. And if you didn't have those shelves, you would have had walls for dressers and uh -huh. chests and that sort of thing. So, uh, Well, it's, I think it's one of the fun things about living in an older home is you can imagine what was it like. Exactly. Yeah. What would the furnishings have been like? I would like? love to have seen were they Were they maximalists or minimalists? <laughs> I'm guessing they were minimalists. Don't you I'm think? guessing they were probably I minimalists. Think they were. I don't know. In the 30s and the 40s, people seemed to be more minimal than... Yes. Than we are now. So. Yes. Good reason to probably. Yes. Yeah. And I just love all of the textures that you always have framed, layered on your on your upholstered furniture. Um, you know the like basketry, the, the weaving, all of that. Those are neat. The six in it. Yeah, those are from a calendar that I cut up and framed part of. Yeah, inexpensive tip. If, it's a well. You say that, but then you go to get the frames frame made. So. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. The calendar costs thirty dollars. Uh, well, so. lately, I lately I have just started going to just retailers and finding a frame that I like, and then, and then using well, and that it works in for multiples. one of. So when you're, can you find multiples usually? Sometimes. Okay. Well, if it's like this, if it's all the same size, then you can. Then you I, can. I haven't thought of doing that. That's a good tip. I like that. Yeah. I should yeah, remember that. I've done that uh, for a couple of different things, and also yeah. when I couldn't, I just couldn't find the kind of frame that I wanted. Mm -hmm. um, and and I, I do have, and I don't see one in here, um, Pottery Barn at different times has had some wonderful 
yes. photograph frames. Yes. That, in fact, there was one made out of this bamboo looking thing and I bought a whole bunch of those and I've used those and you know put artwork in them. So, Some of my favorite um, frames that I've gotten that I, I did that with were actually from Bed Bath and Beyond. Oh, really? And they were the really deep recessed uh -huh. frames that almost yeah. look like shadow boxes. Um, so it, yeah, you'd, you'd have to be creative with it, otherwise you. But you don't have to spend a lot of money to have good to have good style. Okay, well I didn't follow that tip for that. I spent money. So. <laughs> well, I don't always follow it either, especially on those those images. Oh, that, did you see my gallery I wall love that Deborah did? Your gallery wall. So did she select them or did you? The images. Uh -huh. Well, she took all of them. I know she took them all. And then we went through her. Okay, because she had she had sent me pictures of some that she was thinking for you, yeah, yeah. and that's not where you went at all. No, it's not. And right. I love where you went with you, it. You do. Yeah. Okay. Oh, it's just well, incredible. it was. I was conflicted. Yeah. No, you, know? you, you made I just, it strong and powerful. Yeah, I decided and I, in your face, and yes, I just love that. Yes, yeah, I think absolutely. so too. I, yeah. And it and it so, it went with a rug, and it, does, it went with yeah. a kind well, of. Well, I'm anxious to see it in person, but the yeah. photographs are just incredible. Yeah. So. The, yeah. So, uh, so I don't really like using the the expression British colonial anymore. So what's I think is you've it moved Anglo along that. Anglo Asian? <laughs> well, well, no, I no, mean it's have, a description, know, but, Anglo Asian, or, or or whatever. But that's really the the vibe that I wanted in there. Okay. And especially after going to Bali. So, yeah. but enough about anyway. Enough beautiful, about beautiful, my house. So. Okay. And you have a bathroom here. Where of course, you oh, also sure have you artwork. Of course, I do. So that's my collection of renderings, interior renderings. Some of which are from family members. A couple of them, um, one of my teachers in school had kept them um, from projects that she had done. They'd been given to her, and then she passed away, and she gave them to me before she died. So that was really cool too. Well, so a lot of so, your artwork. And then some of them I just found, but um, you know, there's it's fun to have things that meant something to somebody else too. Absolutely. And then of course they mean a lot to me, but. Well, and uh, that they thought of you. Yes, yeah. And for the longest time, I, I didn't have them all together. And finally one day, I was like, okay, I just need to get them together, and this is a good place to do it. And, you know, in a bathroom, this is another tip. Think about this. So many old house bathrooms have this wainscoting of tile. Mm -hmm. Well, if you use a command hook, you can hang on it. So I just kind of ignored the fact that that was there and uh -huh. then just covered the wall in pictures. So, yeah. Um, it's sometimes... You do have to think outside the yeah. box. You have to think outside the structure. Well, most people wouldn't think of hanging structure. that yeah. kind of artwork on but I, a bathroom but wall. I like and that. since we don't, I mean, it's used really as the powder room. But from um, a practical standpoint, too, you might have to hang a towel or you might have to hang, you know, good. Yep. a bathrobe or something but like that. But you know, that. that's my, you know, have you ever looked at my bathtub? You go look. In here? You can't show it, but you go look. <laughs> I can't show it. <laughs> Only I. Only you. Just a reaction. You've never invited you. me to look at your bathtub I know. before. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Okay then. So no, it, we will imagine. There was yes. Just leave it to your imagination. There was there was not a naked person in no, there. No, there was not. A there was not a naked there. person in there. Anyway, so it so, has another use besides being a bathtub. Use. So do you so. ever worry about artwork and? Well, that's steam what I was going to say. See, there's no. I don't have yeah, to. Not, so it, the, it's really just used as the powder yeah. room. So yeah. there is no steam. Yeah. I wouldn't probably put those pieces in a real bathroom. In a real bathroom. Yeah. Okay. They well, are paper. well, glimpse behind here, and then I think we need to take another break. Um, so we can cleanse our visual palette okay. before we move on to the, to the next room. I love that Bunny Williams so, love affair with a house. I'm going to try great, yeah. to another maybe little go fun into story. When I retired from retail and decided to do this full time, and of course I wanted to tax deduct this room, um, the accountant <laughs> said, "Make sure that what's in here is what you do." So all of my design books have been in the living room. So I had to put all the books out on the floor from this room, which was all had been literature oh, wow. and all that stuff. And the living room was full of design books. So I had to put all those out on the floor and go back through them <laughs> so that I could make this a proper design studio. Well, I, um, I hear it, you. But it was with this many books, you can imagine. With this many books. Well, yeah. that's why all of my gardening books yes. are all yes, of in, course. in right. my office, gardening and so, design. So these and are really like interior design books. And then my architecture books are still in the living room because they wouldn't fit in here. Right. But, but. Um, yeah. It's, but and then it, literature had to go to the bedroom. So. Yes, but it's it's just but beautiful, you do. my friend. I just I I love it. Thank you. Okay, let's move on. Well, now through this archway, you come in from the front door, and this is this is the shock and awe room because it's <laughs> absolutely in a good way. In a good way. <laughs> because it's absolutely magnificent from top to bottom, mm. from stem to stern. It is absolutely magnificent. And Stuart and I, the moment we came in, our eyes went to something new. Yes, my new painting. Um, wow. So uh, as I explained to you earlier, I, I inherited some things last year 
And this was something that I first saw in the early 80s and was mesmerized by it. And I was probably, you know, 22 or something. Mm -hmm. um, never dreamed it would be mine. But anyway, eventually it was given to me. So, and I had, I must have always known because that wall only had something on it that was what I called a placeholder uh -huh. and it had been there for 20 something years. So, so I didn't have to move anything around really except take that one piece down, which went outside because it was metal. Yes. So that worked out well. But, well, it can. But anyway, this is an artist named James Harrell who is deceased and, um, from Greece. Oh, no, he's not from Greece, but this painting, painting was from Greece. Greece. So um, his Greek Amazing series. So, yeah, yeah, it's incredible. Uh, and this belonged to a 92-year-old cousin of yours yes. who gave it to you before he passed. Yes, he did. So, And uh, among other things, but this was the, the piece that's just fabulous. It was the top of it. But uh, yeah. yeah, you and I were talking. I think it's just, it's a special thing, I think, to, to gift things before you go mm -hmm. so that you know that the recipient really, truly loves it. Well, it creates any discord down course, the line. Yeah. And, um, and and he lived in Tennessee and had not been in Oklahoma in a long time and had not been to my house, but he got to see the videos that you did. Oh. So he uh, appreciated, and he obviously knew where it was going. Oh. Um, you know, so, so he felt really good about having seen that and... And um, and I think he you know kind of wanted it to be here. So yes, and he yeah. could see it. But thank you for that because otherwise oh, I wouldn't have been able to show him. That, oh, that's so, wonderful. Yeah. Well, it seems like every I have one gallery. Well, I have two gallery walls, I guess. But yeah, you I have lots. To, you have lots of gallery <laughs> so, walls. Yeah, and this and, one's been redone since you were here. So. And they're eclectic. Uh, uh -huh. There may be a certain color, for, you know. Well, like this strain, one is blue, all on but, paper. You know, like I didn't mix any. Oil or Oils acrylic are into it. So there may be acrylic on paper, but they're still, they're all on paper. Uh, and again, it's more of the Oklahoma people, different ones, and, and a couple things that came from my cousin. And um, My oldest sister, Beth, is an artist and lives in South Korea. And and I love her work. And she's got a, several pieces that would just be brilliant in this montage. Mm. Um, I really like that guy. The Which one? The on one on the far right? The is, that a, is that a yeah. shaman? Yeah, I, I think so. Uh, that artist is a good friend of mine, and she was an art teacher in Oklahoma, uh, and now retired. And and I got to rehang her. She called me for color advice, and of course, it developed into we took all else. her art down, <laughs> oh, and wow. I got to rehang it all. So oh, it was gosh. really fun, and she enjoyed seeing it in a different way. In fact, we we kind of changed functions of rooms, and so that led us to that, moving things anyway. Uh -huh. But it all came down, and all went back up, and and it was really fun. And well, so so I said to her, I would really like to have one of your pieces because she just has stuff uh -huh. stuck everywhere. And so that was the one she gave me. But uh, I'm glad to have it. So well, if if on the playlist, if you want to kind of see a gallery wall and how it's composed, mm -hmm. we recorded that as I recall at the cottage. So oh, not, did we? Uh, well, we <laughs> recorded some of you hanging it and your taping thing. I think we did. Maybe. Anyhow, I, just, I remember seeing the end result. Anyhow, <laughs> yes, we've slept since then. I know we have, we have <laughs> slept since then. But uh, but go back and videos. yeah, well yeah, but go back and check it out if if possible because but, there but, is. And in case you missed that, blue tape is my secret. Yes. You, you plot it all out and and put the tape up on the wall in the shapes, and then you can just see how it fits together. So I rarely have to move a nail. I mean, it, it uh, you get it right when you yeah, do that. Yeah, so, eventually. Yes. And if not, uh, you know, give yourself permission and I mean, and to and have I, a nail and hole also, that gets covered up. As I've covered the, I mean, I've, as I've redone this, I cover the nail hole when right, I, you know, with right. a picture, it works out. When you have this much, you can do it. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, well, and works, you but. know, you have to be brave. And this started <laughs> out literally with, this piece has been here forever. That was, was one of my favorite pieces. So that piece was there. There was a piece here, and there was a piece down there, not those two. So it started with three pieces, uh -huh. and it has and grown, it just... and grown and grown and grown until... And there's a little bit of room for another one or two, but not much. Yeah. But I kind of like that quiet space, too. I don't really want to fill the right. entire wall. But, well, because, yeah, uh, you, your eye does need yeah, to rest. It does. Now, a, a lot of comments we get for maximalist kind of spaces. I get it about my great uh, room, and yeah. you get it about here. How do you dust? I don't. You don't dust. No, I do occasionally. And we have help a little bit. And she, believe it or not, uses a Swiffer, Swiffer yes. thing. And she goes around this. She picks up a thing or two, but really doesn't do much um, and, and gets it clean. And then sometimes, you know, I have to go through yeah, every once do some while. of the deep stuff. Well, but, I call um, it like dusting like a cat. Yeah, exactly. You know, you just kind of go like this without disturbing things. And you get... So, and, I keep, and I will say, like, I keep the tabletops cleaner than I might the bookshelves, you know. And those, those happen... Right. Less often, but as far as dusting, but it's really not an issue. Um, and I think that you have to live in a way that's comfortable from you. Is this a piece of Rogers? That's one of Rogers pieces, yes. Oh, wow. Isn't that lovely? It is lovely. 
And, you know, he just recently had another thing, and then somehow I missed it Did again. Did you miss it, too? I, I've been busy. Okay. Um, Give him a spin on Okay. okay. Sorry. So, Sorry. Roger Rungi, our favorite yes. landscape, yes. one of our favorite landscape yes. designers. Our buddy. Uh, is a potter by uh, trade originally. Uh -huh. And um, in the last year or so, he's been working again. And has made these, he calls them silly little... Silly little pots. Pots, yes. Just and they all have a garden-inspired situation on yes. them. Yes. Um, and, the, of course, the leaves are made from real, I mean, they're molded from real from leaves. Real leaves. Um, and he uses decals for the flowers. And, and he just had a, he had a pop-up. Um, he did have, but... Show last Saturday. But they always sell out. Well, they and, did. And, and yeah, yeah, they did. Yeah. I, although, I think our, yesterday there were still a couple available from that show. Well, and um, I, um, but I'm, I'm just going to have to have him make something for me exclusively because I can't I made it to his last show but they were already they were you know they were already sold out and and with my family here I mean, yeah no it's, it's, it's hard to do a and lot I had to tell myself that I wasn't going to get one at that last show I just like yeah I'm sure. not going to do I'm not going to do I'm not going to oh, yeah, do sure. but then I got one and I was so excited so yeah 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 <laughs> um, well, I love it. I remember these very fondly. I know, and I love this. And I have searched and searched and searched to figure out the origin, and I can't. can't they they, they don't I reverse would love Google. To have. They don't. Just describing them doesn't do it. Um, they're they're Italian. I know that. Um, and but I'm assuming that someone um, you know Google brought them back. Search? I did that, and it doesn't pull those up. Huh. Um, it pulls up other things. So, um, and I don't know if you saw the video before. They come apart and they go flat. Yeah, so flat. they're perfect souvenir to right. buy somewhere because well, you could fold them up and put them in your suitcase. And I've noticed uh, what's really popular this year are the paper ones. Well, and that's that what comes up when you start deflate. looking. Right. And yes. those are also made in Italy, apparently, some of them. And they're beautiful. And they're gorgeous. But I still, these are my favorites. So, uh -huh. um, but uh -huh. I wish I could find more. I would like to know more about them. Well, I, I, you know, I love the look of trees like this. I just don't know in, in my real life, and I, this is what I used to do for my kids when uh -huh. they were small, and I still have all of their, their prized pieces, but I don't know that I would have the patience anymore to do a really large, packed tree like this. Well, I say that every year, and then it's <laughs> and just then hard to do. stop when you start yeah. doing right. it. Right. And I don't, and you know this, I don't do it every year, so sometimes the tree does not go up. Yeah. Uh, this one, um, but... But when you do it, I just go for it. So. There might be a meditative yeah. quality to putting stuff on there. Right? Uh, yeah, probably. There is. And, and I will tell you this. When you collect ornaments like you're talking about, every ornament has some kind of meaning. Mm -hmm. So you do spend, you might, I mean, I might probably spent three or four hours putting this together. But my mind is thinking about where this came from. Did I buy yes. it? Did someone give it to me? Right. How many hundreds of years ago was that? You know, all that sort of thing. So it is a meditative sort of thing. Um, but like you and you. Which guy? The corn. Oh, the corn. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, the other thing I think I, I just I remember with some degree of bitterness <laughs> putting up the big trees, and to me it was going to be this family enterprise uh -huh. where oh. everybody was going to be involved, and the kids were going to help me, and Dad was going to help me put on the lights. Yeah. And then when it ended up just every year, I was doing the whole thing. You need and, to go with the meditation thing. Yeah, and, and it was just, I, I went with the, the frustration slash right, resentment. You went with the family thing. thing. Right. Yeah, and, and my, you know, Hub's idea of helping was just sitting uh, on the couch with a glass yeah. of wine while I... Well, and, and mine loves it when it's finished, but, you know. But then yeah. you've also seen these videos where these compulsive people try to help, and, and, and then the person stands back and is like, how did you possibly put those two ornaments uh, together? Yeah, yeah. You know, right. so that would probably right. be me, so it's probably better well, to, I think, to do this. Yes. Well, this um, year, but, I, you know, increasingly but, as I get older, I love the look, the Scandinavian look of just mm -hmm. a bare tree with lights. Well, and obviously, oh, I love that. And then, of course, you have one tree with a few things on it, and I, always, yes. and I have the things to do it, but... I just can't stop. You yeah. Know, so, well, uh, and I think uh, I think it's just one of those you do you, I guess and and so. you do you in that particular year because yes. every that year it might change based on um, well, whether or not you're traveling, you're doing, right. time, health, mm -hmm. kids or no kids. Yeah. Um, and so I think it there's it does. it's like anything. There's no you know this about decor. I've said it a million times. There's no one right no. way there is your way but there's many forms of beauty Absolutely. and that's right. true that's true for the holidays too um now i don't know that you could fit one more thing and i say that and, and you, know, you so just like keep a pile of books will appear and finally i'm like okay they got to go in the shelf and somehow <laughs> i get them in there so i keep forcing them I in i really like these wooden lamps on top up there 
Thank you. Those are a, a 25 year old Target purchase. But they look cool. Japanese. And, and that paper and was type. white when I bought it. <laughs> and it has the it uh, cool an incandescent bulb, you know, from the heat has yellowed it, which oh, I think wow. is a great which I, and I Yes, yeah. I like that. And that painting, uh, whatever it is, it's not a painting, probably is a thrift store, $10. Mm -hmm. uh, probably came out of a restaurant because it was covered in grease. Totally covered in grease. I mean, you should have seen it when I Windexed it to get all the way off. Uh, <laughs> I guess that's you, Mount you Fuji. And you didn't even have to reframe it, did you? I did not. Isn't that a great frame on it? So oh, I, yeah. one, I don't think we showed this at our most recent thrifting adventure, but I found a great thrifted watercolor. Oh, no, you didn't there. show that. And I don't know. I don't think I did. I don't think you did. Um, uh, but I, I, but I will show it because okay. I, I just ordered a frame for it. So when I reframe it, yeah. cause it will look brilliant and it will look Good. brilliant in the parlor. Um, but everything is is just spectacular. You know, what I need to do sometime is I just need to come over here with a bottle of wine and consume the entire bottle myself <laughs> and just and, and 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 just take section by section mm -hmm. over the course of a and, day or two. And and, and that's just what take. and really appreciate each individual item because each individual item is precious. Thank you for saying that. They are. They really are. Uh, so my, um, do you see all the parrots? Yeah. So that, I, I, uh, I guess it was about a year ago, bought a Chinese parrot, which is over here, the turquoise one on the okay. table. Oh, sure and I was like, oh, I want to collect these. Well, first of all, I don't need to collect anything else, right? Right. And it was at a price point that was like, I really don't need to collect these. Collect these. So then I was in Ardmore and going through some of their little shops. And I found all these other little parrots, and they were five, ten, fifteen dollars. So I bought the American version of, 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 of the yes. parrot thing. And what I wanted them for was to use them on the dining room table for, you know, when I'm doing a table setting. Uh -huh. uh, but, uh -huh. but anyway, I think they're great. And I like birds, so it's it's kind of a fun thing. So that's been added to this. Um, have collection. you seen this? I digress. But have you seen this? I think it was on Netflix, the Audubon special. No. About was this James Audubon? What mm -hmm. was his first name? James. Yeah. Uh, what is his name? Anyhow, it was right. about him, and it was lovely. Was it good? It, it, yeah, it was really lovely. Um, there's the, an Audubon book there's, up there yeah, under those lamps. Audubon, you like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. they're thinking, Linda, where did you come up with that? But no, it's yeah. wonderful if you're wanting something to watch it's over James the holidays. A. Audubon. I don't know what the A stands for. Yeah. I think it's James A. Um, but it's it's really really wonderful. And the, well, they have a, the vibe to it. I mean, they're, the Chinese ones are far better. Um, well, and I see, yes, I see your gardening library. That's kind my of gardening library there. there, most of it. The, yeah. the other thing that I, and I'm not sure how to do it. So I, I was talking to my daughter in law, Delphia, from Singapore, mm -hmm. and she likes a real Serena and Lily look. And, and anyhow, we were talking about blue and white, and I love blue and white. And then she said, but a lot of times they will add over there, they'll add punches of red. And and I find it hard to do that without it coming off as just patriotic, you know, red, white, and blue, well, and so which is more. Summery. What do you think here? Because I've done that too. I don't. I, it doesn't read that way to okay. me. And and it's not that I have anything against that. Uh -huh. It's just that to me, that's a more summery look. Or it, but you know, I don't think it. Is. Well, certainly not it Christmas doesn't, time. It doesn't um, read that way here at all. Maybe it's because. It's a toned down red, a brick. Well, I don't this know. is actually a very pink red, and my rag, the red in it's very pink. Um, you know, it's not it's not fire engine red. Um, and so maybe that's it's part because it. it's on and. And I used to, I very much was just blue and white, and then I introduced the Amari stuff, which got that rust color, and that. Yeah, maybe that had to grow on me a little bit, and of course that's a fun thing to collect, and uh -huh. I find that at estate sales and places. So right. I've enjoyed that, and I don't have as much red at Christmas. But if someone asks me what the color palette is in my house, I have to say, of course, you usually start with red, but red, white, and blue. But yeah. it's really blue, and cream, white. and a, and some version of a red, or with a pop of with red. a pop of red, yeah, or exactly. or a pop of chartreuse, which is really my or a I pop really of chartreuse like, right? because. Um, but it, but I you know it really is if you think about it, it's like it's red, white, and blue. Well, it's not. Yeah, so, it, but and it doesn't read but that it, way. I don't it, think it, it does either. It, but I often qu stop and question that. Do you? But I you, really do, do you get what I yeah, mean no, no. about that? Well, it's just like the red lights on the tree. I used to do that, and all the bigger ones, the C sevens mm -hmm. or C nines. I used to do those in white, and you can't buy them anymore because they're LED and they're that horrible, horrible I color. So I, the only thing left was red, and I don't exactly love that. I thought it was better with white, but I can't find the bulbs. So um, you know, just sometimes you have to just make do with what's going on, but.
Well, if you hadn't told anyway. me, I wouldn't have thought <laughs> it, had, it had diverged from perfect in any way. Okay, well, to me, I wish they... Well, then the little white lights are LED, and that color's kind of okay. Yeah. But you can't buy <laughs> well, C9s. In why, it. why is it as designers, whether it's your garden designer, whether you're self-taught like us, or you're professionally, whatever, that we, we cannot help but point out what's wrong. <laughs> of course not, because we're never of, happy. <laughs> because we're never happy, so instead of just appreciating, oh, the beautiful yeah. totality of something, we have to, you know, we have to point out every blemish that's not and that's perfect. That's me, or, you're absolutely right, I don't know. You yeah. can't be as good at doing it if you're not always thinking about it. Uh, well, that's, that's true, yeah, that's that is true, true because it is, and it, it is a <laughs> pilgrimage. It is not a destination. That is true, and it changed. It is certainly evolves, and and you know, and you have to go with that. So you actually do. I do well. So. I well, I go with this big time. You are such a doll. Thank you. And Thank you. I, I know, I know, you have made some changes outside. So so of course I will. And we've be. got to make some more because <laughs> yeah. you saw the tree that's gone, right? Yeah. Front door. Yeah. So. yeah. So we will. Um, we will be back in the spring. Okay. And I'm, I'm already looking forward to it. Okay, good. So, Very good. So, yeah. thank you, darling. You're welcome. Okay. Merry Christmas. Uh -huh. And everybody make sure to look for the John Terman playlist, both at the cottage and here at his Spanish bungalow. See ya.